Joel chapter 2. Let's turn our scriptures. 2. Let the technical help my microphone. Joel chapter 2 and verses 1, literally. Joel chapter 2 and the first verse. Uh, let us make an attempt. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for pulling through. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2, the first verse. Let's, let's see something there. Want to go? Let's read everybody. The Bible says, Blow you the trumpet in Zion. It says, And sound an alarm in the holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. It says, For the day of the Lord cometh. Want to go? For it is nigh at hand. Verses 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess. Can we still hold on a while so that we have even circulation? Thank you. He says, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, he says, great people and is strong. There had not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. He's talking of a people, not just a person. Are we still together? There are no, do you understand what I'm trying to say? There are no persons that, you know, there are no, do you get just for the safety of your heart? Before we move on, you know, no man is in quotes. You cannot monopolize God. And, and it will always be a privilege to be part of what God does by time. Do you understand? But there is something that is unique about the generation of people. Scripture says that a kind of people will emerge. There will not be like that kind of formation forever and ever. How we see you together now. Scripture says, because of time, it says, a fire devoured before them. It says, and behind them a flame bonnet. It says, the land is as one to go, the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall. You see, the mystery behind this phrase is what we experienced. We learned, we learned this, I think, on Monday. That's last week, Monday already. When Elijah, you know, experienced what we now call in this generation depression. So God spoke to him on the Juni battery and told him to go anoint three people. Anoint the king, anoint another king, you know, for Israel, and then anoint Elisha in his room. Are we together? And that means the scripture is teaching you something. It says if, this, if the enemy escaped the sword of, he won't escape the sword of the next person. And why a generation of hybridized people? Uh, is this simple to understand? Shout Amen. So one of the things that we're trying to do first is I'm trying to read a CV. That's what I'm trying to do. Number four, it says the appearance of all seas as the appearance of all seas. Uh -huh. And as us men, so shall we run. Five, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall we leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Six, before their face, the people shall be much pain. All the faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. We shall climb the wall like men of war. And we shall march everyone on his ways, one to go. We shall not do what? I wish to continue reading, but you know, what I'm trying to do first tonight is I'm trying to make sure that this scripture for the first time doesn't look like a promise of some people. And it becomes a familiar reality by meditation that this is our generation CV, Prophet Joel, was declaring. Are we still together now? One of the hardest things to do is to cause truth to walk in people. The Bible says that if you stumble, it says it's not because there's no light with you. We have the presence of light with us, but most times the light with us is not in us. And so in many cases, the things that is ours, we don't seemingly understand enough to be one with that reality. The New Testament, we call it epignosis. Are we together now? You know, we read the scripture and then it looks as if we're talking about a people that will come and will be more anointed, more powerful, you know, more sophisticated. And literally, we are going through a generational test right now. Are we still together? So you're going to help us, Lord Jesus, tonight. This is the goal. This is my desire. This is not what God really is saying, but uh, this is my desire over a while. I'm not, I'm not going out of the intentions of God. This is my core and core text, but I should start with, you know, I will power my spirit upon all flesh. But you know, this is, our, this is our CV. If they would describe every generation and they would have described us, this should have been our description. That there's a kind of people that rose and they don't know how to break ranks anymore. The Holy Spirit is going to help us tonight. His intentions are clear. And in the name of Jesus, there is a shift. No one is leaving this room the same person. And this service is going to serve as a deployment strategy. 
in the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name I declare. Good evening one more time. You may be seated. God bless you in the name of Jesus. All right, so tonight we had considered, you know, a topic over the weeks. Um, I believe this is our third engagement. Am I correct? This month of March. Is that true? We did Chosen Ones, part one, and part two. Amen. So tonight we're moving into something beautiful, something deep, you know. When I say deep, not from the perspective of, you know, knowledge, you know, uh, and sprite. I'm talking about getting deeper in that which God has opened us up to. And we're going to be studying to the theme, Chosen Generation, this evening. Chosen Generation. Last week I said clearly from the book of First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, we'll have read a whole lot, but I'm starting behind time. All right, and... You know, verses 9, First Peter chapter 2. Let me start that way. First Peter chapter 2 and the ninth verse. One of the things the scripture says, want to go, read carefully. In case you are joining for the first time, I challenge that you listen to the part 1 and 2 of Chosen Ones. It helps you maximize tonight. But, hallelujah, it says, why chosen generation is in your scripture. Let's read everyone, please. A royal priesthood, uh -huh, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who had called us. So you begin to see, like I've thought to you, is a methodical approach that chosen comes after calling. When the Bible says many are called, few are chosen, is because few make, you know, their calling and election sure through diligence. Shout amen. And one of the things that we want to do tonight is that we want to study to a kind of generation that is the intentions of God. Are you still with me at all now? And what I'm trying to do is way older than myself. But scriptures is my fortress. Are we together? And why I'm saying what I'm saying is the fact that, you know, a lot of generation even bragged like, I even mean more than us. Uh, we just claim knowledge. We don't even brag the totality of a visionary life. Many Christians don't understand. There's a generation that lived and didn't want car. They didn't want nothing. That if you begin to grow wealth, you have lost the path of righteousness. We learn God, we even learn productivity. Is it true? We learn God, we learn marketplace ministry, or maybe at least in this house. But I'm sure it doesn't happen only here. We learn God. There's a way we have found balance around these things. That these things the Gentiles seek can be added. And we have learned the laws of God's multiplication enough to bring this addition. Are we together now? There was a generation that came. They truly were expecting the return of the Lord, but as an escape. I, used to, I remember so well, what, yeah, Y2K. How uh, I many of you know that short code formula where people sold all their properties? And people were saying Jesus is coming in the year 2000. Who remembers carefully? You know, it was one of the worst things that ever happened because some people didn't read in classes anymore. Say, my parents said Jesus is coming soon. And of course, yes, a lot of people waited and waited, and it's seeming like this Jesus will not come. So scripture describes a kind of generation that is not going to be expecting Jesus from the standpoint of irresponsibility to say respectfully. And when I say responsibility, it's not an insult. It's just a state where, you know, uh, you know, scripture says male and female, he made them. Are we together now? Which means that to every dimension in life, there is a male counterpart, there is a female counterpart. And anytime it is God we are discussing, there are two dimensions to that same orientation. Modern perception is not about I per mm -mm. There are two dimensions to that orientation. So, for example, the miracle dimensions of God will teach us these things. That if God wants to work a miracle, there are two partners to that reality. God himself and the one expecting the miracle. Are we together? And God will always give instructions. Are you following me? He was going to multiply five loaves and two fishes. He asked what was on ground. They said there was a young lad with these things. He received and gave things. He broke and the bread was multiplied. Are we together now? Multiplied as they shared. All right, number two, his first miracle was turning water to wine. The Bible said he gave an instruction to fill six water pots. Are we together now? There is a revelation of God's dealings that requires human participation. God is a relational God. Koinonia is not just what happens when you have impartations and those things. Koinonia is how God expects mankind to live. It's the atmosphere of living beyond existence. So anything God intends to do, he needs man in participation. Scripture was so bold, Apostle Paul says, we're laborers alongside with God. Some scripture says, co-laborer. You know, that God is God all by himself. You don't want to be God and believe someone can co-labor with you. I hope you understand now. Many of us in this room with our ego, we never allow someone to share title with us in the things we planted. Are you following me? And God says clearly that, you know, anything I postulate or anything I intend to do, I would always need a man. And this is a place where men can bet initiatives out of God's intention. 
Are you following? And God is going to keep watching, hoping that they will scale higher level of transformation for such initiatives. Even the man standing before you, the popular phrase you call people that preach are men of God. Is it true? So there is a man times God. Are you following? So there is a partnership you are seeing here. There are two things that you are listening to. is God and man. That's why you pray for the man, to be sure that he's a God man. Not just a good man. Hallelujah. So one of the things we need to learn is that there is something God intends to do that requires not just individuals scattered, but a collection of a people called a generation. Now, you have to be careful to understand God's language, and I'm trying to just make my introductory very short. For example, the concept of nation. When we begin to talk about nations to God, Nigeria is not a nation first to God. I hope you understand. Any nation that you call nation is not first a nation to God. What God calls a nation is the people out of that reality that have been redeemed. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So there is Nigeria, of course, our citizenship, and every person in this room is a Nigerian, except otherwise. And that means that, you know, uh, political correctedness, you are a Nigerian. Who gets the flow now? But the people says, the scripture says, if a people called by my name shall humble themselves, not if everybody in that nation shall humble themselves, because the concept of these things differ to God. Let me just make you understand what I'm trying to say. For example, when a man does well, and the impact of his work spreads so much, you begin to use what like this man is a global phenomenon. But to God, God does not make men global. God rather makes men transgenerational. Who gets the flow now? The perspectives are different. Does it make sense? So if what is a nation before God, the church is a nation, the nation of God. That's why I will always teach with a little bit of theological dissertation that the Israelis now are Israelis. The first people generation in Bible are Israelites. The difference is that they were a sample of God's kind of nation. These ones that have bombs. Does it make sense now? All right, so when we begin to discuss generational, all of that, it's not just about my grandfather, my mother. Sometimes they may skip your grandfather in the story. No insult. I hope you will not be skipped. So somehow, somewhere, you know, God actually moves transgenerationally. But for the basics and to start out tonight, the concept of generation has to be redefined in God for us to understand carefully what we're saying. So I would like you to just put aside a bit of things that you know and let scripture help us. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish you together, everybody. So now, Apostle Peter is our crown study tonight. Scripture teaches that he will build this church upon his revelation. And, you know, he heard this right, literally. So Apostle Peter was aware one day of Prophet Joel's, you know, prophecy. Joel chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, let's start from verses 15. Acts chapter 2 from verses 15. Uh, I want you to be coordinated and I want you to be sensitive also. Acts chapter 2 and verses 15. I'm praying in the name of Jesus tonight that what our generation needs will land upon some of us in this room tonight. Acts chapter 2. Oh dear. Let's start from verses 15. Are we all there? The Bible says it began to make a defense. It says, for these are not drunken. Now, I started this way not to, uh, let me say what I'm trying to do. I want to first do my best to, you know, contribute my quota to bring a little bit of, you know, position into a generation that I live in. You know, I've heard people say things like, you know, I want to be drunk. And I, the scripture didn't say we should be drunk. The Bible actually said, do not be drunk. Then it says in wine. If somebody says, but you can't be, mm -mm. The Holy Ghost does not feel you to be drunk. The Holy Ghost fills you to overflow as ministry. Who gets the flow now? We, our Christianity does not permit what is not consistent with the character of the Christ. That is how you pray that it looks demonic. There is, there is a way you pray mechanical that it defeats the character posture of God or the Christ. Who gets the flow now? Are you following me? What, the Bible never said, and the neighborhood thought Jesus was mad, even when he was groaning. I hope you get now. There is something I'm doing first here. Apostle Peter will show up with a defense, and the defense is that these ones are not drunken, which means that every generation is going to come with a bespoke dimension that may not have been found in the former one. And it's almost easy for them to throw it off. Who gets the flow now? I say this looks like some being young and waywardness. You understand now? This is madness, as it were. But if God uses this methodical approach, Satan is not a creator. Satan is an inventor, which means Satan will strategically position himself in a way that that which God intends to do is corrupted because of our lack of understanding. So, of course, yes, you know, when God begins to find the people, the way God's hand will sit upon us is not going to be. You need to study many contexts for this reality. For example, the way God called 
you know, Samuel, are we together now? But one thing we need to learn forever and ever is that you could see the predictability of God's character in the transition of generations. Are we together now? If we are not careful, this is what will happen. In case we do not get to the other side, I say things because you are dealing with men. When God speaks in scripture, it comes to pass once. Once man is involved, even God repents once in a while and says, I wish I didn't, I didn't make my intentions No, It's so funny that you cannot even prophesy people's thing to them. Because it's one way for Satan to get there before them now. This is the only generation that hears their prophecy. But he's trying to say the man is not deep when they should wage warfare with their word. And what Satan deals with is light. Who gets a flow now? The Bible says his greatest strength is transform himself as an angel of light. So I'm seeing this and seeing this now sometimes. It's just an announcement to the kingdom of hell. Who gets a flow now? And they deploy the gates and this man will not even survive that stuff. I don't mean an, an example. And you know, all of us are defeated. So somehow, somewhere, one of the things we have to know is that Satan knows how to understand the systems of God and quickly stay in corruption as it were. Who gets the flow now? Shout amen if you're following. So the Bible says, Apostle Peter made a defense. He said, these people are not drunken. You know, what was happening looked as if these people are taking some wine. He says, no, be careful. Oh. These people are stepping into the new. Who gets it now? There is a birthing of a new generation. And of course, yes, it may not fit in into how, you know, the Pharisees now pray. I hope you understand. Or how they worship. Or how they seek to learn the word of God. There is something that looks different. But that is different does not mean it's not God. Who gets the flow now? Are you following? Okay, so scripture begins to teach us. It says, sin is but a third hour of the day. 16. You know that they are productive people. Are we together now? He's telling you clearly that these people understand that Jesus said that the day you walk in the day, the night comes when no man can walk. So when you see this Christian living his Christian experience, he's a conscious person as touching productivity also. Do you get what I'm saying now? You don't have to believe what I'm saying, but there's how a CEO cannot pray. That is how the burden in his mind as touching that which God is building with his life causes his construction in prayer. I'm not talking about coming to a point where you are now praying like a big boy before God. I hope you understand. Um, even those kind of people need more help. It's a state of death. You may not agree in time. You know, we're praying, then the guy is staying there say, say, let the boys pray. You know, that kind of stuff. He will gather the cloud and pedestal. You know, so we see a madman amongst us. I hope you understand. But in the reality of things, we're discussing that there is a way these people are. If these people were agrarian people, you could tell that they were productive people. You get the flow. They had the character pattern of not staying back at home when they should be at work. So if you saw these people now, they are not people that wake up in the morning and start drinking, you know, something like, like burukutu or something. You may not know what that means. You, you know, I know some of you will know. <laughs> you, know you, might, you know there are people that wake up and that's what they do. They don't even brush. Guy just wakes up and drinks something and says, ah. This life will go home, make him. You know, he's already high. Then something says you are a king and a priest. He says, yes. You understand? Say, go out there and, and rule your word. So the young man is there. And then the young man, in many cases, comes into church and comes into a setting of a people hoping for the return of their Lord, but finds a way to infiltrate the system to what he hopes for is part of the curriculum. Who gets the flow now? So these people are well-constructed people. From the standpoint, let us agree together in Apostle Joshua Selman's voice that God and Satan doesn't use lazy people. So these people are not lazy. We get the flow now. These are people that without God, they will still go to farm. They may be sinners, but they will still farm. They don't, they don't even understand the move of God. But they know that if I plant a seed of corn, I will reap a cobble. You, you, you understand what I'm trying to say now? These are people that will not be arguing about miracle money as it were. They know that even without blessing, work is one way. It is to get what to eat. It's so funny how a Christian wake up and say we will not work, but God will give him funds. You just see how crazy we became. I hope you understand now. So there is a need first for us to address all of these things. And it's an apostle Peter that can do this. There is a track record of this man being a fisherman. I hope you understand now. So he made a defense in verses 15. For time's sake, 16. So he began to say that this thing you see now is two-dimensional. There is the spiritual, there is the technical. It is not just a move of God in a church of lazy people, poor people, lack of exposure-oriented people. I hope you understand. What that does is that you think everything happening in your world is all God does. I hope you understand now. So exposures of other places seem alien and foreign to you. He says, mm -mm, this thing is a product of a prophecy you may need to sit down and profile. Say, this is what the prophet Joel spoke of. 17. The Bible says in verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Are we together now? He says, see the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit. You know, prophet Joel said, I will pour my spirit. 
Apostle Paul is written, is writing by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says only men wrote as they were moved. So Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, forgive me, please. I, I, I love Peter. You know, <laughs> don't mind me. I, I wanted to do something subconsciously. Should I even say this? Let me say it. It may help. I've been seeing this thing about Paul and Paul, argument about Paul. I've not seen people argue about Peter. So these days, I want to teach you a lot of Peter's teachings. Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, it's, it's just one brain issue. Do you understand? People that have this, one brain is, is, is numb. That's why. By the time you're comparing Paul and Jesus, do you understand? But let's move on. Okay, so scripture begins to teach you something powerful. It says, by the moving of the Holy Ghost, what God moved through Prophet Joel to say is, I will pour out all the fullness of my spirit. But when Prophet Peter began to speak, or Apostle Peter, he began to say, out of my spirit. Which means that what you are seeing here is not all there is, this man said. Our generation is also making an attempt. And who are these people? Some of them were proselytes. They were not natural Jews that naturalized to become a Jewish citizen. Generation is a deep context we have to understand. Who gets the flow now? Literally, for you to get the message simply, it takes mystery to understand the generation. Generations are known by God by mysteries made common in that time. The Bible says, Paul said, this thing was not made long to only apostles and prophets. It's now made known unto me. He called it a mystery. What's a mystery? Of course, a mystery is a body of God reality, the face of God revealed to a people. It makes you feel like something occultic. And the Bible says they began to speak in tongue first year. And the Bible says, how be it when you begin to speak in tongue, you speak to no man. But you do what? You speak mysteries. Are you still in church now? So that generation was redefined by the mystery that was made available to them. So generation is not our grandfather's church, my father's church, my church, and the children's church if you have a child. So he says four generation church. That's not it. All of the four might be one generation. They have not even lived the reality of the mysteries of that reality. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying now? And the job of mysteries is that it helps enable that which God has promised. There was a crossover in January. I thought you, I said, when God promises you anything, you must understand the mystery that works it. Favor, for example, is a mystery, as it were, to humanity. And you know, in Yoruba culture, I won't tire to keep using these falling things to help you understand the reality. People will work out, for example, and say they are not making sales. Then they go to visit a witch doctor or something. And the man says, what we do is called favor. But in our civilization, they call it, um, can I remember this thing? Ogunawure, that's the Yoruba word. You know, and of course, yes, you know, I'm not defending culture, but basic Yoruba culture would not need to kill a man to help you make money. That's, that's satanism. Do you understand? They don't really kill men. That's people that eat body and do satanism. Use men for ritual. It's not even for money. Is it clear to understand? If I say they don't kill people, that's foolishness. There are people kidnapped. They sold their head off. There are people kidnapped. Their parts were taken away. So what was that? It's not money ritual first. It's satanism. The worship of Satan requires human. But if a Yoruba person now, not born again, says... I have this something and it's not making sense. They use all these, all these long rats. Now, you know what all these rats something. Some of you see all these things at your bus stop. They hang them. So far you live here, you know what I'm talking about. Elewe or more mama. You understand that kind of stuff now. Do you get what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. So the person picks all that together, pounds the whole thing. I'm sorry, it's not an abalis class, but I hope you get the message. Makes a soap out of it. The person will bait, but you must go to work. The, the witch doctor, even though he's a witch and doctor together, he will ask you, what do you do? No, which doctor? You, you must be a thief, at least. There must be a... And he will ask you, how thief can you... How smart can you thief? Then you say, ah, with a thief, oh, he say, are you sure? He say, do, do this thing for you. If there is no part where there is a value contribution, the man will not even do. Scripture now teaches us a mystery. Say, good understanding gives you favor. Who gets the flow now? That once a man chooses to understand something correctly, he says, there is a favor that sits upon that individual. And study Jesus Christ grew. Oh God, no, forgive that. Jesus grew wisdom. And what? It says, having favor. Which what? Simple. So somehow, somewhere, you may have seen a generation that lived the hard life. All of them. And it's not an insult. To if one or two persons out of 200 million people lived in the reality of God's resources, that means that generation did not have an expose to that mystery. Who gets the flow now? Are you getting the revelation? If it's a mystery, it should be common in a generation. So they know how to walk in favor. Remember a time came, people didn't fall under anointing as it were. There, there was no mystery unveiled as touching, filling people up. There was a time in church history, it was somebody's specialty. His name was Mr. Pentecost. So when they want to fill the people in the orthodoxy, they will invite him. Even in the early days of Pastor Benny Hinn, he was 
they will have to call Pentecost to fill people up. But the day came, it was teenage meeting. How many of you grew up in church that way? You are just singing like that day of Pentecost. And everybody was falling. You see the adults who are looking at you. They know that people can fall under anointing. But they don't understand the mystery that makes it so replicable. Almost anywhere and everywhere. Does it make sense now? Shout amen if you're following me. These are the things that bet the basis that you call the move of God. So the move of God is not really people breaking chairs. It's not people doing all these things that we should even call. The move of God is that there is a mystery made open to them. And then on the strength of that mystery, there is a reality of God they can bet also. Come on. Remember that this kingdom is knowledge dependent and knowledge driven. So the mystery leaves you with an information bank. Who gets the flow now? It's almost repeatable over and over. You can do it again. You will be surprised a six-year-old boy can feel some hope in the Holy Ghost. You may not even understand. Do you know there are people, all these boys now, if they say pray, they're hoping you will fall when they hold you. It's a young boy. He just don't even understand the dynamics properly. He just holds you. How did we begin ministry? What was the confidence? At least if you are not here, you will fall. And once you fall, I can do what you couldn't do. So in case you stand up back with the sickness, just know that at least you are falling. What is, do you get what I'm saying at all now? It was almost made available to anyone and everyone. Is somebody with me this evening? Shout amen if you are following me. God will help me tonight. So basically, Apostle Peter begins to teach something very profound. He now says, out of my spirit, upon all flesh, he says again, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh -huh. He says, your young men shall see visions. So one of the things we see common is that young men are given to visions. It does not mean to see vision like, like, like a prophet, you understand? It means that they are going to have a visionary orientation of that which God does in their times. You know that it doesn't matter the denomination of church that you actually, you know, worshiping. All the churches have one goal. I hope you know. And the goal is to present a church without spot and wrinkle. Unfortunately, uh, denomination is not even really a problem. It's the division that denominators actually build. Did you get the message? There's something about a man standing, teaching other people not to receive from other people. That's the division. Different churches does not mean different church. All the churches want. But somebody stand and say, may you prosper than something. Then people say, God forbid, we'll prosper at this place too. Then there's trouble. Do you get that kind of stuff now? The real problem I'm facing is division. And let us say this basically. Many of you, Muslim, Christians, cultists, pagan, athe, Nigerian atheists, because Nigerian atheists, really, if poverty hits you, you will, be, you will trust God. Do you understand? So all, everybody meets in class. And look at this, oh, you don't believe the same belief in quote, but whatever they begin to teach you, you go and download your course outline on the website. Do you get what I'm saying now? You believe that thing that they say. When it's time for exam, what do you read? How do you hope to pass the exam? Do you get what I'm saying? So let's imagine that that was church as an example. And everybody came from different denomination flow and we came into life. That means what you are going to use to write life exam should have been the same manual. Where division came was everybody was bringing stunt into Christianity. Do you understand now? If everybody stayed with scripture, the church will be one. Even if you look different, if you like, wear white garments, I wear brown garments. Do you understand that kind of stuff? By the time you speak, we will speak alike. Unfortunately, it is division that is the problem in church. It's called schism in Apostle Paul's language. It's not really that somebody opened a new church. If you open a new church with the same manual, it's still not a new church. So let's get back to work for time's sake. So Apostle Paul begins to tell us, Apostle Peter, forgive that, you know that people will be given to visions. You will see young men. They would have visions of the same thing God is doing. I've always taught people that there are only two visions in this realm, as it were. And the two visions work the same thing. There is a vision God has. And then there is the one Satan perverted. I hope you understand. Every other thing that you call a vision, a vision, or oh, this something, I had the vision, this is this vision, is all a contribution of the same vision. In just different dimensions of contribution. Are we still together now? So Apostle Paul is, is uh, Peter is making this defense and he says, your old men want to go shall do what? Dream dreams. So we see right in this place that of course, yes, what Apostle Peter said, the next source was number one, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Is it true? Before I taught a teaching in Lagos, the second convergence in Lagos can, can media check for me, please. No, let them check for me. I appreciate your contribution. What? Before you tell me, toss here the Lord as the topic. <laughs> 
the Lagos Convergence this year, the second one. I know I thought about the 19th century revival first one. I can't forget that one. That one, I sleep and wake with it. But the second one, we're talking, I taught you about bodies. I was teaching about, how many of you ever listened to that teaching? Let me see your answer. If you did, let me see. Why no revival tarry in this generation? I, I understand the, the, the mix up. We did why vision starry in LTP yesterday. LTP was so beautiful yesterday. All right, so for time's sake, let's get back to work. Scripture begins to teach us something that we have to be conscious of. Are you still with me at all now? Where I'm driving towards is that before this day, the Holy Spirit never lived in men. What the Holy Spirit did was that it would sit upon certain people in the class of deliverers. I hope you understand. And I always use Samson as my case study because he had a, a more of an outward manifestation, like a power demonstration of that, that operation. So he sits on him, he tears a lion, sits on him, he pulls a city gate, you know, throws, throws it away, the spirit is gone, then Samson sits back by a tree and is just like a normal man again. But for the first time, the Holy Ghost will enter into people and not live. That means if something lived in this day, it can pull gates every day. Don't let me say it can walk in righteousness. You may not understand. You know you like trouble. Something can be pulling gates from, do you understand now, from city to city. As Russia and something's fighting, goes pull the gate of the presidency villa, pulls this other gate, clash it together, they end the war. Because the Holy Ghost now lives more in him. Unfortunately, the Holy Ghost that lives now in the believer is something we have now gotten used to. That do you get what I'm just trying to do? Number two, Apostle Peter is building a nexus around the birth of the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And I've told you that the church is not first concepted when Peter started the, the first church. The Bible talks about the church in the wilderness that was led by Prophet Moses. Are we together now? But the Bible is trying to now tell us that the church will be run according to the build up systems of Jesus now. And Apostle Peter was privileged. He was converting this prophecy into this true operation. That our generation is going to start now, number one. We will now start filling people up with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have to leave people anymore. Number two, we can now build a kind of church that Jesus is the builder, not men. But let's go to the book of Joel chapter 2. Let's check Joel chapter 2 verses 28 down to 32. We may still see a lot of things that scripture proposes should happen and we have not experienced. If I'm blessing you, say amen. amen. All right. Can we go now? I want to be everybody. He said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out, of my, out my spirit not off. This is the real, you know, manuscript of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. He says, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Let's we see even Apostle Peter switched it in that in that text. Let's go. One to go. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out. You know what it means now? Even people that have not been paid off the price, their redemption. And the New Testament implication here is that they have not been sealed by the spirit of redemption. Okay, so let's move on. That means they are not saved people. Let's continue. It says, and I will show wonders. Apostle Peter told us with his mouth that I will pour my spirit, yes, but right now is I will pour out of. So there is a lot of realities we have not explored yet, which is called the fullness of the Godhead. I wish you together now. Number two, it begins to make us understand in their own time, it is young men and visions, old men and dreams. The manuscripts say old men dreams first, young men visions. Are you getting the flow now? Are you still in church? I'm trying to make you see the application. Then number three now we are seen, it says, and we show wonders in the heavens. And in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Next verse, please. It says, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord comes. So we see also that there is something called the terrible day of the Lord that the people are participated of with. So the darkness was not orchestrated by Satan. God was involved in that darkness. So there is a lot of dimensions. Let's check the next verse. Shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord want to go. This one too has already happened. People can now be saved. At least even without a preacher. Uh, what shall I do to be saved? You, you, you can, do you get what I'm saying now? There are people in nations like the Arabian nations that meet with Jesus as an encounter. And he will not break the protocol of scripture. The word is nigh your mouth. With your mouth you confess unto salvation. With your heart you believe is in your scripture. Which means anywhere in this world, how to be saved, this one is already done. And how was it done? The church was able to document a sequential flow for this to happen anytime and anywhere. So we see some of the things that have been done. Today now when you come to church, most preachers will preach and tell you things like, you know, if you have not been born again and you want to be born again. The only reason I have, the only issues I have is sometimes we are teaching on seven principles of, of, of success. As an, it's not first bad. 
You understand? We're teaching the church, and success in the kingdom is just you doing what you are told to do. The success does not mean you buying cars and all those stuff. Now, if cars come in honor of your obedience, if house comes, it's part of the bounties of your successful life. So while we're teaching success correctly, then you hear you cannot be successful if you don't give your life to Christ. So in case you are in this church and you are not born again, and you hear all I said, and you say, I want to be successful too, please come out. Instantly, this is what happens. The motive of his coming out is not consistent anymore with kingdom. You can't come out to be successful and say you are born again. Watch most things you clap for. The people came for reasons that are very minute to the real reason. Because being born again means you are going to stop living and pick up his life. And part of it captures suffering that what they told you to come out for does not capture. From the day that you accept Jesus, the gate of where we... Do you get what I'm saying now? Small things people do, they escape. Bam! You just, small, you just this moment say, bam! Satan knock you. Do you understand? Any small thing, there's trouble. So, I, I don't feel like it's correct. They teach on eternal riches. Then we mention money, US dollar, and they are correct things. N in pounds. N in pounds. Everybody's clapping. How to N in pounds, number one. Open paper. Number the other, uh, Imagine that you say you cannot express all these things I said. And I'm not saying it's first a lie, but it's not a primary reason, as it were, for those things. But this thing was a prophecy one day. What we are messing up was a prophecy one day. That if Jesus really wants to make a man born again, he will let them have an encounter with him. You get the flow now. And I'm not limiting encounter to just, you know, all of this um, prophetic, uh, that there's an encounter with the word that is real and tangible. Are you see with me at all now? That the life you will receive, John 3, 16, for God so loved the word he gave his only begotten son, if you all of that say you shall receive eternal life, this is eternal life that you may know. So of course there's a place where there's a kind of a body of knowledge that you know that opens you up to genuine salvation. That thing people now do now, I'm counting five. Four and people are running was a prophecy one day, which means that when we mistaken the approach to this reality, we are going to raise a kind of people that God cannot call generation. Who gets a flow? Have you seen someone get born again and is now backsliding? Then you say, Why well, I've not seen you say, I don't think I can continue. He's not born again. I know you say, Ah, oh God, he's not born again. The most pure part of your Christian life was when you got born again. I hope you can remember. It was almost as if you will never sin again in your life. You forgot that God that built this thing knows what he's doing. There's something called sanctification journey. It was, oh, are you still in church? You are sure. And in those days, because of the state of your life, when you ask God for a thing, God used to answer you. True or not? You just say, Lord Jesus, uh, there's no food in this house today. Lord, send us food. You no, know, those are common prayers. God, because God gives you bread now once you're a child. Your children just say, Moi me. That's when you grow up here. If you don't say more me, they will not respond to you in time. You know, so you say more me, they say, ah, kind of fair. Sweet. Now, they are discussing house rent. You're asking for sweet. What would they do? You will hear? Bah! That's where they give you that sweet. And you are, bah! Mark, mommy, do you understand that kind of stuff? You pick the sweet, you begin to suckle the syrup. Now, this is the truth about it. That there was a point in your life where you, you are not necessarily, you are not asking for kingdom. I hope you understand. You are just like, if Jesus is true, and I'm now, I don't know if you prayed that way before. If it is true that I will make heaven now, prove to me by sending me a And somebody came and said, how are you? Why are you looking sad? See, nothing. He said, talk now. You know, you know all those things you do. You are not saying, should I talk? Then they say, uh -uh, trust me. He said, I'm hungry. Then he says, what do you want to eat? Then you show your transformation, zero level. Say anything. Anything. Do you understand? Say anything, anything. Then they gave you 1K. Ah, you see, I just believe now that God is real. So basically, one of the things we see here is that that prophecy captures what a whole generation now unveils as a mystery to be called a generation. I hope you understand now. There was a kind of people that came that made it easy to be born again anywhere in the world with a predictable pattern that shows the character of God. What will a generation that you are in also do? Chosen to do what? How we know is not all the stones pulled everywhere. There is a common mystery. Who gets the flow now? There is, that you, do you get what I'm saying? There is, and we're still struggling to maximize the basic ones. When Satan wants to destroy the formation, he turns us against the fathers. And one thing we don't receive is the memorials of their work. Who we'll gets the flow now? Once we insult their memorials on the strength of new altars birthed, we are going to now start a journey that has been journeyed before and think we are better people. I don't know if, you know, growing up in this area, I saw different kind of stuff. So let's say, for example, you, you always move in before your neighbor. How to know you will live here 
correctly is that there will be bush by your left and bush in someone's land though. so you will now do fence like two coach it's just to let people know this is our place so goats anything can cross you know you are not securing nothing and then the neighbors will come one day then there's a way they will throw one tape line then they say Oti -wolewa. that's the phrase that means you have overstepped your boundary then fight will start they call chairman see they will argue argue then the person will say i will not agree you and have you seen somebody rebuilding fence before no, do you get message now? That's what we are doing. We are rebuilding what has been dealt. Just because it doesn't favor our position, or doesn't favor our mental disposition, doesn't favor what we think it should be. With the presence of AI, are you sure angels don't have wings? By the time you see AI, oh, he goes. The guy say, are you sure that teaching Papa taught AI angel get wing? Go. Do you understand that kind of stuff? Are you seeing this? So. We bended something. Do you get that kind of stuff? I mean, so God is watching you. You are redefining angel yourself. That's why you don't see the angelic in the life of a generation. Read all this book of, I don't want to mention names too early. You will hear simple, you know, there's a book of someone I love. It's not up to 30 pages. How to unlock your angels. The book is a little bigger than this handkerchief in size. Very small. The summary of everything is angels that do the voice of his word. That's all. That's the revelation. The man just wanted you to know that you can't tell angel what you like and say, go on, fry do do. Do you understand now? And do you get that kind of stuff? The people lived in that reality. I hope you know. But we, we, know, we even know angel names that is not in the Bible. But the angels betray us in the marketplace. Do you get what I'm saying now? Because we rebelled. And in case you think what I'm saying is just something I'm saying, anyway, all of you, so far you are young, you always want to attempt rebuilding. To you, there is a age you get to your mommy doesn't understand marriage. So when she tells you, Ilieko, Ilieko, you say, mm, 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 mm. Matthew something, she's watching you. Because the first marriage you experienced was their own. And you will only do what you know. She's seen another her in you. You are arguing with what you don't understand. So she just said, you were owned by a law, Ilieko. You say, alone in jail, the God of covenant will not, will not agree. She said, no problem. You know what is happening right there? You are trying to revoke. There is something you know better. But how to apply is the problem. Do you understand now? The missing ingredient there is that there is no communication unto God on that regards. And sometimes it doesn't mean that you hear God from the standpoint of people that are custodians of a move of a generation. But there is a capture of Jeremiah's prophecy. You could, uh, Joel's prophecy, you could read and see. Who gets the flow now? That this empowerment is as touching this reality. But you don't know. So you use the weapon that you used to fight Satan to fight your mother at home. Really, who should you tell that your marriage won't be the same? Is it your mother or the warfare in your mind? Who needs that word? You are speaking to the wrong people now. You don't understand. Who should you tell convincingly that you, you will be a wealthy man? Is it your father? He said, I will see where you get. You now say, it's before your eyes that I will get there. Can, you see what is happening now? That's exactly. Who, who should you tell? You know, when you live there, you will hear that voice again. Which means Satan found a potent weapon to hold on to. And he brought a warfare. So who should you reply? And that's what we are doing. That one is individual warfare one. Generationally, we are replying people that we should reply Satan for. That oh, their generation will not fail. They may not know everything we think they should know. So we'll stand and face Satan. You get the flow now. The, the man that preach and make you feel like he heard God, he heard Satan's voice. Oh. And how you will know is that there is no character pattern of God's love, which is expressed even in constructive criticism. You should criticize issues, not persons. When people are going for people, there is a lot of problems. Do you get the flow? It's not being deep. You get what I just did just now. It's evident. Come on. And that's what we call revival. Powerful. Let's move. Now, in case in your heart you are thinking, I'm talking about someone. Yes, I'm talking about them and you. And you may need to send a letter of repentance. This is how the Satan thing operates. Your mind will bring a picture. Can you see what I'm saying? Where did you hear that one from? God will have asked you who told you. The implication is that we will raise a church one day that if we are collecting an error, they will not even understand what you are saying. They will be wondering, so people say that. Can you, do you get? No, it's about something in Zambia. You just, you just imagine. How did you get to Zambia from here and can't pay for flight? The Bible says a generation will be picking teachers for themselves. They will ignore pastors after the art of God for them. And listen to because of their itchy years. Can we move on? So one of the things we need to see again, right? And that my emphatic focus is that you know, 
there is a day of the Lord that is promised or a day of God visitation technically and I, I don't mean personal visitation for you to break into success I'm talking about you know all that you and the, the, the eschaton basically do you understand now and that day is promised and there is a generation that is chosen for that reality our generation is going through that generational test is it basic to understand shout amen if you're following me so in the teaching in Lagos why revival tarries in a generation Thank you for that topic reminder. I said carefully that the Bible says, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And the reason why revival will tarry is because we don't understand that what God is seeking for is flesh. You get the flow. When I say flesh, it's not works of flesh. He's seeking for bodies that are able and available. But unfortunately, we take the role of the Holy Ghost. We try to focus on the spirits and do you get what I'm saying now? So are you still in church? Do you get what I just did? The Bible says, it didn't say, I will pour my spirit upon all spirits. It didn't say, I will pour my spirit upon all souls. It says, when this reality happens, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, which means that when God's word will not come to pass in a time, is that there were no bodies for that which God said. Are you getting the flow? If you want to get a hint, check the way generations lived, how long and how, how long people lived. There was a time... 969 was a reality. 708 was a reality. Why live that long? I know you will keep saying things like hereditary. That's a medical explanation. Why live that long? The Bible says actually, and this is true, I, I will get there, that God does not write dates that people will die. There's nothing like God wrote to die at 13 or die at 32 or die at even 140. Some people live long but never lived. So you get the flow. They never lived. They don't know Christ. They were not impactful. The Bible says, with long life shall I satisfy you. Are you still in church? The concept of satisfaction there is destination. I shall not die is good. Why will you not die? But live to declare. The day you stop declaring you have died, even if you are still breathing. Who gets the flow now? The day you decided not to be a router of reality, you are died. Are you still in church now? So we now begin to see why people had chances generationally. It was not just because... God was watching people say, let me see how long they lived. I hope you're, mm -mm. It was because there was an intentional orientation God was expecting to broker to that time space on earth. Are we still together? Now, unfortunately, the average lifespan of a Nigerian is 40-something. You just imagine for talking out loud now. 40 was when Moses, the first part of his tripartite life, that he didn't even know what to do yet with his life. He has not found himself. He's the totality now of an average person. If you eat Nigerian meal properly, the rice that would get bad. You just finished cooking it all. You didn't do nothing. Just because you turn your back and face it back, the rice is drawing. You cook soup. The soup will grow molluska inside hot, hot soup. You cook beans before you buy bread. I'm just saying some of you need to stop eating some food and start eating yellow gari. That your nonsense of acting like you are, you are transformed, American. I don't eat something. I eat spaghetti, bolognese. You need to, do you get what I'm saying? I, I hope you understand. Don't die for nothing, no. Go and be eating. You, you made a meal yourself. Put it inside a cooler. That when I go to work in the afternoon, eat it. You have not gone out. You say, let me hard fry. You open it. Is it a lie? Okay. Let's continue. So tonight, what? Is he a lie? You are looking at me as if you produce these things. Uh, are, you the peop are you the one? We had an event. And me, I don't take malt again. Ask me why. You know that we talk about carbonated drinks. They do pss, you understand? And I remember malt you used to do pss. Ah, you know, I just thought, I said, then there is this same. I didn't find out too, but so far it does pss, you know, for now. Do you understand? So when we did a meeting, this was a work for something, I can't remember. We took Amstel mortar. I want to say something, I'm talking, how many of you noticed like there was a bit of sand at the base? You will not know because you, you will shake it. <laughs> if you doubt me, something we have, we have discussed. And I'm not fair saying maybe it was their challenge. I took two to test, was dark, dark particles underneath it. I've prayed for you, don't worry. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? You drink the more thinking you are living well, you are drinking cancer. Okay. Or God drink zobo. Lemongrass, lemon dash, honey. I like it cold. Put it inside nine long. Put it in the freezer. Do you want some trap? No problem. Let's move on. For tonight, we are not focusing on bodies as it were. I thought that in Lagos second week, we are focusing on the discovery of what lives inside that body. 
Why will God say, I pour my spirit upon all flesh? For example, if I say, let's say for example, I wish I had something to say. If I say, I will put securities around these drums, this drum set, what, what does it mean? It means there is something that I'm protecting, not necessarily even the drum set. True or not? Are you following me? If I begin to put sensitive doors in a house, what does it mean? There is a family I have that I'm protecting. Is it the house I'm protecting? Okay, so there is a need for us to check into that which lives in the flesh. Is it basic? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Let's start gradually. I'm conscious of fine, but I'll, I'll spew till almost 9 p.m. tonight. Is that fine? We'll have a part two. That's why I didn't name the topics anymore. I'd learned from last month. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's start, find a scripture, go back to sacrifice and something you would not request. Start maybe verses 8, find, find a good place and make a context media. I'm grateful. I just wrote my key points out. I wanted to say about the passing, but let us study. Let's go. One to be everybody. Let's read. Is this a good part? If it's fine by you, it's okay. We're following you now. The media man is looking like an albino all of a sudden. Let's go. Let's go. Let's start from five. Let's start from four. Verses four. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses four. The Bible says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away what? Sins. Are you following? But I hope you know there was an age that lived and it was blood of bulls and goats that took away their sin annually. So that means there were things God couldn't do in that generation. Who gets the flow now? Because if God moved eternity in their hearts, the eternity can only start for one year. Towards the end of the year, if you don't find a way to manipulate that person in the book of Leviticus to go and learn how to get back to sacrificial order, that which God began is corrupted. So, a better testament is here. Are you still in church? Let's go. Next verse. The Bible says in 5, Wherefore, when he cometh first, this, this is, a, is an archetype. It helps you understand how you should live life. It says, Wherefore, when he cometh first, into this world is yet, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body as thou prepared me. 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do what? Do you know that what this person is talking about, as it were, is not flesh that came? What is talking about here, the book of Hebrews also captured how we went to the altars of God. And then the life becoming a propitiation for our sin was pleasing to God. Is it simple to understand? What is that thing that pleased God? From the beginning, the Bible says the Lamb of God was slain before the world began. All of a sudden, a body lived for three and a half years. Are you still with me? I understand there's a place of the body, but that's not my focus. Do you understand? I'm not ignoring the body side. And the Bible says there is someone that went, and what he went with was pleasing to God. And he satisfied the wrath of God eternally. So what is that thing? The Bible says that thing that came, came in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And the orientation of that thing is that it comes to do thy will. Are we together now? Jesus began to teach us something in the book of John. Media can find for me if, you, if you're able to. He says, this is my meat. He says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I want to use that teaching for sent ones. So we'll still do sent ones. So scripture begins to teach you something powerful. That there is a kind of body you have. That the same way there is meat. White meat, red meat, goat meat. You know, and all those kind of meat for your natural body. There is a meat also for a kind of body. And he says, that meat is the will of God. That when that body is not accessing that will of God, that body begins to experience malnutrition. Who gets the flow now? You begin to know that there is a side effect, and it's that thing that we are focusing on tonight. Because it's that which God actually uses collectively on the context of generations. Is this simple to understand? Can I move on? So the Bible says in the book of John chapter 18, John chapter 18, we begin to see that much more than just vessels and bodies, they are very important. If you listen to that teaching, I focused on it. I even taught people how to eat organically. I hope you understand now. I encourage people taking abs in that teaching. Because God in the Bible encourages to take abs. 
when you eat things that are fatty, some of you eat suya like pig. Do you understand now? You buy suya one five. Then only one man. Now you believe you are enjoying life. When your patriarchs ate suya that way, there was a herb, scripture defined. Don't ask me. I'm not allowed to go to go and read your Bible yourself. It's there. You know, you're already green belly. They think you are living fine. No problem. Are we there? The Bible says, is that John chapter 18 and verses 37? Are we still together? We want to move because of time. I use the scripture of John 18, 36 on Monday study night, if you can remember, where I was saying, the Bible says, my kingdom is out of this world, blah, 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 blah. 37 says, Pilate therefore said unto him, are thou a king then? Remember that those times, when you are a king, you are a demigod. So the discussion in this place is not like that king in Lagos that became chairman of road transport, R-O-T-E-A-N. There is a king in Lagos that is now chairman of road is <laughs> patriarch according to him. They inherited a platform to help people, but him, he needs to be on the road directing to your son. So he's not, he's not someone loose king or a lay is king. Do you understand? The kings of scripture, they had partnership with God. You can't stand before a king and not feel fear. Not thugs. Okay. So it's like you are standing before Pharaoh. Do you understand? Now, that, then you imagine you are you are you are abusing Pharaoh on Instagram. Just just imagine that you told Pharaoh or Bakoba on, on, on Instagram. You know, according to what we read in scripture, it's not Zuckerberg that will warn you. If Zuckerberg will be warned for creating a platform that you are able to say, that's exactly what I'm saying. King where they reply back for Instagram. Now King Instagram. Okay, so let's get back to work. Jesus understood what Pilate was saying. And he said strictly to him, are you also a king? Do you understand? Do you really have this spiritual depth and root? Is there something? Because see, this is what you have to understand. In those days, for people to be kings, every other person had to be a subject. So it's almost like everybody's serving them. They, they, they literally were gods. Yoruba we call them Allah Keji Osha or something. Ba Keji Osha. That means after the gods, you are even the representation or represent in court of the gods. Do you get the message now? So the man asked Jesus, are you like that thing? So in deep spirituality, he's asking him, are you sh like Shongo? Are you like Ogun? Do you understand? Are you like Obatala? Are you like all these guys in their capacitation to empower kings and, and rule even through people, you know, with all of their emblems and all? Jesus wants to answer. Because the question is a deep question that stems from ordination. It's a question that you can only answer if you have an understanding of the realms of God. A realm that is bound by koinonia, not bound by corridors of the mortals. Koinonia, oneness, where God said, come, let us make. No, ha, ha, do you understand that kind of stuff? Because many of you, where you knew yourself is an atmosphere of fear and worry. So they actually say you are a warlord. <laughs> you are a warlord. Why, why are you a warlord? Because you used to go to fellowship, they'll be playing a bit of war. Then you two are behaving like someone they should chain for a while and test the brain. People knew who they are because of fellowship. They stayed in the realms of God, I hope you understand now, and by the law of refraction and reflection, they knew. They, they, they were image. Who gets the flow? You don't like what I'm saying? Be free. Everybody leading you, I hope you can see Christ formed in them. They are going through perfect, I hope you know, you really will see a mad leader. Do you get it now? Don't let them use you to do ministry or use you to carry out being powerful man. If you meet that man, you, you'll be surprised. Wow, so is he a lie? I've seen leaders that lead people to misbehave. When you hear them talk about finance, you, you, what? But the people they led, we don't agree, you know, they say we're, we're Christians, There's a Luther for Christ. He asked him, are you a king? Are you this class of being? Jesus gives an answer. Jesus said unto them, He says, Thou seest, want to go, I am a king. That means, Yoruba version will say, What we, what he's trying to say is that whatever king represented to you, do you understand? Which is the height of what you give all the honors for? He says, You said it. Do you get that stuff now? So, in case you are saying, like, am I, because 
if, if I ask you now, what is the maddest God? You most likely will say the God in your environment. Of course, the gods are universal in quotes. You know, like I used to teach. I can't remember these things I used to say again. I, know, I shall know that Amadiwa is maybe Shongo, also in Yoruba land is. I, am I saying, I'm saying the right thing now. It's one God in Rome too, maybe tall or something. Am I correct? You know Amadiwa, huh? That makes you say, ha. <laughs> you understand? So let's get back to one. So in case you think the most fearful thing you have seen, the most dreadful thing you have seen, is that Ahmad Yoha? Are, are you like Ahmad Yoha? He says you said it. Does it make sense? So it was a discussion of two people that understood the meaning of what lives inside bodies. It's not about we no go grow, leave Jesus. We no go grow. You know, the Bible says if they had known, they would not have crucified. There were a lot of people that were in the unknown in the crowd. There were two people conversing in the known. There are many bodies there saying, if you don't leave Jesus, I will kill you. Jesus said, Barabbas, 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 one, two, go, Barabbas. One. That's what many people are doing. They, there's no meaning to what they are doing. There are two people conversing and saying, see, but leave these people. It's a realm of significance right now. Do you understand now? If you say, I'm like one of these gods, you said it. The Bible now says, Jesus began to, for our sake, not for pillage sakes. The Bible says, read carefully, everybody, if you're there. They were asking about king. He's talking about the totality of his expression in his mortal vessel. He says, to this end, want to go, was I born? He didn't say, am I born? Or did they burn me? I, I want you to see the worst. It is a finished work factor. It's not to this end, they, they, do you understand they gave birth to me? You know, that's a correct English position. He said, to this end was I, and he's living. Ah, hey. It's like somebody saying the end of his life. Do you understand now? Like, after everything is said and done, it is to this reality that I ever came in this flesh. Do you understand now? And the Bible says, which you must be careful of. It says, and for this cause, uh -huh, came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is the truth, here I want to go, my voice. Then Pilate asked him, verse 38, we'll just stop here for time's sake. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? So we begin to see that even who was proposed the king met something that was voluminous in the book and took a pause to ask. If a king is asking you a question, you must have met the true God, in quote, or met the God of commerce as expertise if you don't know the true God. Of course. So the first thing we see tonight is this. While there is a generation of people and all of that God is trying to do. Remember he said, why generation because of mysteries? True or not? Then the mystery literally has such a curriculum that enforces everybody to know the reason why they were better than the purpose why. The cause which their life will effect for. Causing the effect. Not victims of life and this realm that live under cause and effect. Where somebody writes a law, they go down for it. Who gets the flow now? You know, if you really are a Christian enough, and this is not an insult. It doesn't matter how tough this world is. You cannot suffer. The reason why you actually are burdened and bothered is because salvation requires to see that the landscape lives in your common reality. Does it make some sense now? Uh, see, this is not any sense of pride. If a Christian is going to the harsh reality of this time, we may need to check this your concept properly again. The Bible says, he that is from above is what? Above all. He that is above, do you get now? It's above all. What is the meaning of above? They call the man talking, Jesus of Nazareth, yet he said it's from above. That means there is something about this question that makes you see beyond everything this flesh gives as a parameter. I'm a Yoruba boy. This one cost it. Come on. I'm a young man who counted the age. Is it not census? Do you think they see you as a young man? In heaven? They know you are a young man. They are trusting you with prophecy. Who is not well out of the prophecy and the man that owns the prophecy? Of course, the man they prophesy to. You try to convince yourself from the standpoint of that which you live in. You get the flow now. And say to yourself, you know, if I ask you now, when do you think you break into purpose? Where you say, maybe in the next 17 years. I couldn't, why? He said, then uh, almost be 40. You understand? And they look at you never and say, ha, 70 years of imprisonment for like four territories. And we thought there would be speed in your life on the strength of that which came from above that you know was why we yielded those people into your government as it were. So one thing Jesus was trying to do here was to make you see there is something more than, while it's true that there must be prepared bodies, I hope you understand now, the vessel that lives in the body is why the body requirement was that tough. Are we all still together? 
Today is a lot of knock and everything. Don't worry. Let's continue. To this end, want to go? Was I born? This is the first question tonight. Before we start talking about generation something, you, we sing many songs that I hope Satan is not the one clapping the beat in your ears. Ah, my generation is waiting. You know, and, and you know, the person talking cannot express identity correctly. If you say, who are you? You hear, I am a son of the Most High God. So, what am I? I'm the bastard of the Most High God. You know, because it's funny. So, really, who are you? Apart from, I will do ministry. Do you understand? They say, I will marry man of God. Really, who are you? So imagine God in his wisdom will now make someone that cannot explain themselves to lead other people. No, think where. Think, think that person being the, the principal of your children's school. What will you do? The day you find out, say, Mr. Principal, apart from calling you principal, principal, if you, in this kind of school, they say principal, principal. So apart from being principal, who are you? And most people now mention their name. They say, I'm Mr. Ikenefuna, you know, that kind of stuff. Then, do you understand? Say, okay, apart from Mr., because that Igbo name you said now is because of the flesh. Your, your, your content is not Igbo. So, let's beat this flesh quality. Who are you? You hear a girl, no worry me. If you want pay, pay. If you want put the child for school, put them. If you don't put them, may we drop. No be by force. You will hear, no, no, get these children. Their wallet don't start. You know, that kind of stuff. And, and you are watching the person. So, how will you help my child? Even you, you advise to say, Bobo, let's try the next school. If you say why, you didn't enter the classroom just because the person that was at the front end couldn't define identity properly. Is that funny how who does not know who he is knows who they sent him to? I hope you know he chose that person himself. If you get there, how will you tell yourself? Remember, Jesus told us who he is, and he told us with many ways for understanding. For example, I am the bread of life. They used to call him Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am I'm the bread of life. He walked to, in John 11, the death of Lazarus. Is he correct? Go to the death of Lazarus. The people, they were conversing. He said, I ah, did of come early. You know, the, the sister said, well, it's okay. We know we'll see him. He said, stop it. The morning of resurrection. I am the morning of resurrection. I am resurrected. That's, that's, that's the man that can die for the world. No, ha, huh? ha. Huh? Oh my to be on my man worry. Who am I? To be and do you understand that kind of stuff? Exactly what we do. That's why you are trying to be an American name. Do you get that kind of stuff now? You converted your real Igbo name to American version. Today is for Igbos. <laughs> How you see I'm, I'm trying to learn a name. I don't know. Oh yeah, we are confessed. The Igbo people say a name you have. Azuka, what does what's the English name? This the tree is great. History is great. So if you want to make it American, what will you call it? No lie. Zuka, you see, Zuka, Zuka bag. <laughs> so the, the people that named you are Zuka, they know, they know why. They know. You get the gist now. You go to your vessel, you just see Zook. Bag. They say, hi, Zook. Whereas what you are dealing with is Zuka. Do you understand? <laughs> what we're just trying to say is that there's a lot amongst us that do not know ourselves beyond the description that this body gave us. If that's what life is for you, don't even be talking about generation. There is a need for us to sit down. Do you understand what I'm trying to say for now? Chosen generation means that these people are chosen to a revelation of a kind of mystery, do you understand, without breaking ancient dimensions. Without, they are not going to stand, do you get what I'm saying at all now? There is continuity, as it were, progressively for revelation. There are people that will usher in epignosis, as it were. Shout amen if you are still following. So if we begin to ask us, I have always taught in the school of service, I will tell people in leadership, you, when they ask you, you know, what's your name or something, you don't mention the name they gave you, you mention your possibilities. If you can't mention your possibilities, you are not a leader. There should be the advantage of you or the effect of you. And that's what warrants. And leadership is just a, a fragment of dominion mandate or great commission apportioned to you. Leading people in the area of strength refined, a weakness made strength. So who are you? I want to say this because I'd, I'd, I'd said over and over, and I always shout it every time I, I had my birthday on Friday, and I thank all the workforce in, and all the Lagos people and Ogun State people too, but we're not talking about birthday this year, so listen to this if you don't know who you are 
and you are doing happy birthday to you. To who? We answer to who? Do you know? You, you think for two minutes. Ah, hold on. You na 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 na. Ah, you know. Ah, hold on. Who? Do you know that mindset is so is so defeating? How? How old is the age of this body? You don't know how old is the reality that lived in the body. And that's where you're going to keep making it. I have a birthday formula. Do I have a marker here? Is somebody from me? You don't have to like what I want to do. Do you understand? But let me give you birthday, birthday formula. I, I like this marker. Don't, don't worry. The Bible says your destination is called satisfaction, right? Is that true? And satisfaction, are you following me? So scripture now teaches you something potent. It says with long life. So however long your life is, this is it. Let's say, for example, let's choose an average age. The average of this church should be what? Let's just say 20, right? I know you don't grow. Now 20 I want. Anything I want, now I want. Maybe you go tell me what I want. Right? Is it true? Equals what? Oh, don't know. We want to find X in church. You are used to finding X in school. So, really, what is X? X equals what? Let's do minus 20. I want to pass a message to you. Plus what? Do you understand what I just did now? So when you are counting your birthday, you are counting the days left, not the days spent. Do you understand? How old are you now? I'm 25. Wow. Say, so my God, something, you know, 25 years, no be being so. Say, it's God, though. It's God, though. Whereas what we are discussing is everyone is saying, let's, we don't know how you'll be satisfied because some of you is at 40. Once you have a car, two hours, and one land where they can bury you and something. So everything we are discussing here is minus 20 plus 40. I know I look like a sadist to you or a killjoy, but these are people that understood what is in them lived. Jesus will keep saying, there is no time something. Have you read the scripture before? There is, you are the one living as if, you know your plan is, you, are, you have marked one hedge in your heart. You may not know subconsciously. And let me tell you the bad news you don't want to hear. Part of the reasons that program marking that age, many times is the affliction that comes from people's flesh. So there are people, they will tell the news and say, you will not live more than three weeks anymore. And we agree. Why? They will say, because with the virus maybe in your system, after 30 weeks, you will shut down. But you know, people have outlived those days. Why? Because of course. There was, are you still in church? Did you get the message carefully? There are many of you here that are scared, thinking you may not live so long. And if they ask you why you hear, they detected one, one infection, something, in my kidney when I was 22. So if I really ask that person, how long do you think you live here? I don't know, but I, I put it in God. He has a figure. If I make him trust me, he will tell me, maybe 40, shall if you talk to him from a point of understanding, you have 40. I'm just trying to say there is such capacity in you. I hope you understand now. So you could choose not to die. And that's why somehow, somewhere, in case you don't do anything correctly, please, I beg you, raise a good family for yourself. Marry those that really love you for that which God is doing in your life. You may live longer if you stay amongst people that love you more. Job's wife said, curse God, want to go. You get the gist now. His friends came and said, this thing happened because of the things you are doing. We have seen you do. Where is the source of your wealth? If not because God was writing a story through Job's life, do you get the flow of thought now? That man will die. Okay. I heard the news of, there is this popular comedian. I don't interfere, but it's a good lesson to teach young people. This comedian that they had to cut off his leg. He's hurting. Do you know why? I saw a video of this man. He trusted the church for healing. I hope you know. Find the video yourself. Where a pastor slapped him. Someone that is not well. Slapped him. Say you are casting devil. I, I will have slapped him back. But God knows how he arranges people. Then the man, he said, while he was on sick bed, his wife was asking for passwords, asking for his phone, asking to transfer his account. True or not? Then the people have said, marriage is not, does not work. You know, somebody said the good best place to get wife is not church or mosque. He said it's court. He said just stay in divorce sessions. Once you find out the woman was right, ask her out. 
she's a right woman. That you will return back to where you saw her. It, you understand? You know, go divorce. You understand? So it makes two wrong people to break a marriage. Okay. While you are discussing a wicked woman, there is a woman called Joker Silva. Nobody is a standard for marriage. Who, and don't, don't, because you know you sack Joker Silva and say, my mentor in marriage. That's one of the ways to know you are not part of the generation I'm talking about. That, I'm not saying I'm, she's not a standard. Do you understand now? But I think the husband even have dementia or something. The, that means the man can't remember she's his wife anymore. But she's still caring for who can love her again. Ah! Or got married with. If you like, let pastor choose for you. So back to what we are trying to say. Marry well, do you understand now? Any small argument, she won't take your call for two weeks. You are still sending rose. Every day you are sending rose. Say one rose to pacify you. I've sent two. Uh, how many days is two weeks? 14 days. You have sent 14 roses. Say 14 roses for you, my love. I hope the fragrance of the rose will melt the anger in your heart. She saw the message. She wiped you something. You are sending. You will live with a wife and children alone. Do, do you understand that kind of stuff? People will be thinking, if they count census, they say, there are eight men in this room. By the time God comes, he will count one dying soul. Okay. So please, I beg you. Your birthday is not really... Every day I've lived on earth that I don't have definition for to effect... Sorry about that. To effect contribution. Do you understand now? Your birthday literally is... The day that reality in you finds expression. The day you can't really tell. Do you understand? You may have heard me say, you need impact to celebrate birthdays. Because that which you now know, for this cause was I born, is now affected amongst people. So people have a legitimate reason to say, happy birthday to you. What is you? There is a you inside you. That's why when the person dies, they will say, you post you most birthday. There's how to die. They'll be doing death anniversary. Live well. Many of you, you still have a good year to do this retreat. I know some people say, bad days, they say, leave everybody with what they believe. That's just that one day in your life. And believe me, prophetically, you have such realms that are even angelic bound. I don't want to say what is not, you know, good because some things are true, but it's not part of your curriculum for growth. Jesus said there are many things, you know, I will have told you, but you can't bear them. The Bible says many miracles you did, but it says we wrote this one for you to believe. So let's say the one that makes us believe. But in case you believe in the angelic, your birthday is such a deal. Are you still with me at all now? Listen to this carefully. Some of you need to shut down on your birthday. And all you are asking is, Lo, I come in the volume of the books. Who are you? You need to ask you, who, who, who lives in this vessel? The, the one I know is this one. I don't know the one that wills my body to move. Do you understand now? Do you get what I'm saying now? There, there is one that maximizes all my body parts. Who, who are you? The day you have that correct answer, that day you will know your role or contribution in that generation. Who gets the flow now? I hope I'm teaching well. The day you find that answer, that day is 8 p.m. I will begin to find a way to shut down shortly. You'll find your role and contribution. And let me say this to you. Let me first mention what is the role of that generation. You know, we're in a generation now. So let me make you know what the generation wants to do so you can, you can it will be easy to go and retreat and know what your role will most likely be. Because if I don't do it that way, you will just listen and still be confused. Does it make sense? So I will return back, but let me quickly do this. This is not how I planned it, but this is what we work, so that I will do part two properly. Huh? Help me, Lord. Okay. Listen now. From the day Apostle Peter spoke about Acts chapter 2, there is a body of curriculum every generation that came, plus the one that failed, participated with there is a generic role of generations to generations to generations. Number one, write it down. All generation plus the ones that failed that betted us. And if we fail and bet a new one, they too will inherit this one as a backlog. Their first role is the awakening. Now, I won't explain for now. Do you understand? I've told this here and there, you may know. The awakening. Do you understand now? The job is to bring that out pointing. It's not crusade. More than crusade is just a way to try. Awakening, do you get what I'm saying? You may have seen this picture of a man on fire. And as he's walking, people are catching fire too. That's awakening. And you live more out of the church than in the church. Who gets the flow? 
So Awakening is not a special conference with plenty of celebrities. Awakening literally is a platform that conveys, do you get what I'm saying? The real life of God in the place where soul is the commodity, the marketplace of life. Number two, for time's sake, there is a need also to bet the church of each generation. I will just say this for the passing. Every generation faces different opposition, true or not. The church always has to deal with a different orientation of generation as church part time. There was a time malaria was a big problem, right? Not anymore now. So what is the problem now? It's funny how somebody says she's a dog. That's, the, that's, the word I, that's where I met myself. Apostle Balon never met someone that says they wish they were dogs. You, you just imagine. On, on national TV. He says, why do you choose to be a dog? He says, I just like it. I don't like being a man or woman. <laughs> then they ask the question, how will you do relationship? He said, the man must not relate with dogs. You know, so... How will you relate with your fiance? You say, ah, like, hey, you know, I see him. Instantly, you know, is, 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 is it not something? I have the video evidence, so I don't just want trouble for my life. What dog will pursue the YouTube account? Do, do you get what I'm saying now? Those times they were faced with things like chicken pox, true or not, they brought God's power. Now, chicken pox, they take you to somewhere in the teaching hospital. And you, do you get what I'm saying? So what problem are we faced by? Every generation generically has a responsibility. Number three, every generation has a responsibility of territorial transformation. Put in brackets, marketplace ministry. Do you understand now? The church will always affect the generation they live in territorially. God wants us to start from Jerusalem, then to Judea, then to Samaria before the ends of the earth. God doesn't want you to start from Facebook to the ends of the earth without taking care of Jerusalem as it were. Does it make some sense? So if this is true, we see a tripartite dimension of assignment generically that you should orchestrate a contribution towards. So let's get back to our person. We are still dealing with us in the name of Jesus. Are we together, everybody? What is my role? What is my contribution? Remember I said the discovery of who you think you are? You know I said think you are. Because what we are discussing is very tough. Many of you are, you are who you think because of a context you grew up in. Do you get what I'm saying now? There are people that think they are pastors because they live in the church environment. I've seen people shut down church. Why did you think God called you? Say, I've been doing this thing all my life. Is that the, the call to an assignment? You have been doing this thing all your life. Jesus was a carpenter all his life by virtue of his father. Who gets the flu? Eh? Many of us were who the exposure where we live in say we are. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? And this is a big deal. So let me try and labor on that regards. And if I make some sense, we start part two from wherever I stop. Let's read first. I like to do generically. Do you understand? Because before we start trying to be unique, we have to first stand on the foundation of the generic nature of life. So what is the role or contribution of anyone in their generation? Let's even imagine they didn't know God, they knew God, they loved God, they didn't love God. They were not conscious, they were conscious, blah, blah, blah. Psalm 71 from verses 15. Psalm 71 from verses 15. I want to recommend a teaching I thought like 2020 or something. I hope I'm correct. Transgenerational relevance, something like that. And relevance with God. Try and listen to those teachings, it will help also. Psalm 71 verses 15. I want to go less with everybody. The Bible says, my mouth shall show forth uh -huh, thy righteousness and your salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Uh huh. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thy. You see, his righteousness is righteousness. The next verse, please. 17. It says, O oh God, uh huh. Thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. We're stopping at 18. Read 18 carefully. It's an account of someone's life. Verses 18. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have one to go. Show thy strength unto this generation and your power to the generations that will come. So you are clear on this or not. You are supposed to show the strength of God to your generation. Shout amen. See, let me tell you this again. This issue of living is your responsibility. The Bible says... It was Moses that wrote that the God said, I will no longer strive with mankind because he's also flesh. It's in your scripture. So it says, the days of the man shall be 120 years. Moses died when? The last time we saw him in flesh. 
before he went to the mountains of God and was buried by God. One, two, zero. Was David has said the, the age of a man, what is it like frail, like this, 70. And how would David die? See, people's theology is what they become as. Your theology of God is your experience of God. So if Satan wants to cheat you, he will cheat you in doctrine, not power. You are going to use your power to the degree to which you have knowledge. Did you get the message carefully? Okay. So the Bible says that our job generically, even if you never understood identity, purpose, did you understand all these things? Because it's a lot of things you are saying. Are you getting the message? You have a responsibility to show the strength of God to a generation. So Bible quickly save itself from collective shame. That in case you turn back in the day of battle, want to go. The Bible says it means your strength was what? Was small. So there is a place where God is even talking to a child of God, a son of God. And he says it's possible life faces you and you move back. You can say I'm no more doing this work God gave me. The Bible says don't say God left you or gave up on you. A day came. That's where you could stop showing the strength of God. Did you get the flow now? Which means everyone you are clapping for and want to be like. This is the story of their life. They are showing the strength of God to their generation. They are not showing the strength of knowledge. I hope you understand. They are not showing the strength of exposure. Those things are needed. They are not showing the strength of finances. They are not showing the strength of emotional empowerment. Maybe their brides, their wife, or fiancé or something, or good relationship. They are showing the strength of God. So when you see people for a while and they fade away, that's how much they were galvanized by the strength of God. Not from the standpoint of God's will to make people start and shut down. The Bible says if you lay your hand on the plow and you look back, everyone says you are not fit. You know what it means to be fit, right? Footballers. It says you are not fit than the kingdom of God in the context. Which means that God is not interested in, you know, kickstarting a man and he goes halfway. But you can start and go halfway and there's nothing God can do about it. So the first thing we want to learn tonight is this. What is the strength of God? Hebrews 11, 32. Hebrews 11, verses 32. Is God blessing someone tonight? I know it's a tough one. You'll laugh next week. Hebrews 11 and 32. Let's read everybody. It says, And what more shall I say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, David also, Samuel, and the prophets, which captures you and I, if you love to be part. Do you understand? The next verse. Would you faith subdued kingdoms is a little bit of CV. He says these people wrought righteousness. Do you understand? These are people that obtained promises. These are people that stopped the mouth of lions. Let's move. The Bible says they quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of sword. Want to read carefully. Read it again, everybody. No, read, read that place. Out of read it like almost seven times. Like don't don't read it to me. Read it. We're discussing the strength of God. We're not discussing the strength of man. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's in your scripture. The Bible says, he told you, he said, vain is the help of man. How will a man help you? A man doesn't help you with financial power. He helps you with financial strength. People don't help you with their power. That's why when you know the spirit of people's power, they become less. So even powerful beings, like all these deities you respect, they help you out of the abundance of their what? their strength. If you say I need three billion era now, you know, I cannot help you. Even let's imagine I have three billion, I can't give you. Do you care what I'm saying? But if you say you need like, don't mention a price, MB do the mentioning. You need like 30 naira. Do you understand? I can't say, uh-uh. I have strength. You understand? I'll tell you. How many? Imagine how many 30 naira. You say just, just 30 naira. I say, okay. I'll give you two. You know, do you get that kind of stuff now? Because of strength. So, the Bible is teaching you something powerful. It says, everyone that was strengthened and lived roles in their generation, the way they did it was that I found a weak man in them, but they submitted themselves in weaknesses. They didn't find a way to convince a great God they are great guys. They didn't find a way to convince the greatest in strength like they are strong. They, they didn't fall for the bait of self-righteousness. Somehow, somewhere, you are seeing a man that you are thinking God will do nothing with. But the man is submitting himself to, Lord, to the Lord. And you may have from the strength, because every generation looks out for strength. They don't look out for power. Many people don't know. I've always explained this thing a bit. What is power? You know, all these guys that do dumbbell. 
I'm sure maybe you know that kind of stuff. This time we are young, we we'll do 14 milk. You put cement, put put small rod, lie on your pit latrine. Just be punishing yourself. Do you understand that kind of stuff that we didn't know we will still use fast to destroy everything we labored for. I still have muscle small, you see now. <laughs> but look at this now. While you are right there, bless you, and you are doing like this, they can weigh that dumbbell. And they'll tell you this dumbbell is maybe 5 kg, as an example. True. Then you go out somewhere on the island to a professional gym. Then your type of gym equipment is not there. Then the list is, let's say, 25 kg. Then you convince yourself, say, ah, kono, kono. You know, I can say, nah, like I own. You know you cannot stand up, right? That kind of thing is the gym that will stand. You will go, do you understand? Because you don't have power for that stuff. Strength means, let's say I used to carry 25 kg. You know, there are some of these guys that wanted to die while they are young. They used to hang their home. Who knows that one? You sit down on wooden bench. You carry it. Two people will hold you. You do like this. You understand? So let's say I've been carrying that 25 kg old. Then it gets to the VI. Then they say, ah, this gym, something, wow, 25 kg. You know, he will pick it up. He, hold on, because he has such capacitation. But hold on. Strength means if he carries it up now, how long? If they say pause, you know, as you carried it. Some of you did be like that. Say me that thing now. That thing that used to punish people, people that offend you. When why? Who remembers that thing? Change your style. You too. They, and the person don't mean you. That is change your style. He's waiting for the one that will break your lumbar vertebrae. Do you understand? Change your style. You say change another one. You are doing another one. You know, and you too are doing like as you do another. Say be like that. You come like a You understand? Kind of <laughs> so strength means as you be like that. How long? You know, since you know me doing like this. And you understand? Kind of stuff now. That's strength. So people will help you out of their strength. That's why people that start helping you without calculating strength ended up as your enemies. The person that paid the only level tuition fee, 200, by 300 they couldn't pay. Do you like him today? You will say, they, they took their, their mat. God gave us rock. Whereas the person himself went broke. Because he doesn't have strength for that stuff. Do you understand? He has power, but not strength. So what we see everywhere we are clapping for is not power, it's stamina to stay on. Because in many cases, it's the gates of hell will not prevail. But this man can stand out of position. And sometimes you are seeing a very fine face. Looking so handsome or beautiful, but what you should be seeing is stamina. I hope you understand now. There is a strength you are not seeing that media has used light to cover. Do you understand now? And every church uploads the finest picture. I hope you know. And so to find his relative to some church is when people are on the floor littered helplessly. When they should preserve them. Those are, those are their governors and all of that. Is to some of you do campaign, they will bring up picture. You say, Drake Master, looking like you here, can this one lead us? Okay. So those are because to them, the man wants to look powerful. But what God says to show his strength. Are you getting what is the strength of your business? You have heard this man is you. If you only you switch, the business will switch. Many of you could not hold on till God answered your prayer. Not like it used to take God time to answer prayer. He answers when you pray. But the answer sometimes is your transformation orientation. Sometimes God was just waiting for a superior version. But you gave up too early. There is a research I, I learned of. I've been sharing that an average billionaire is from the mid-age of 60s. Globally, multi-millionaires, the average age of the billionaires in the world is 60-something. You, you are 24. You have given up on financial prosperity. Just because your one million you save. Duty bank, two bank charge before you, you understand kind of stuff. And now you have not had a million for six months. You say, Well, forget, forget now. We will get money for this realm. And God is saying, Even those that you are reading their testimony in your realm, no scripture, they are saying it took 60 something years. Do you know the stamina it takes to wait for 60 something years to now attain stability in finances? As it were, you are 24, you're already looking for more anointing. The little one they gave you, there is a sick mother at home. They have not exhausted the scope of your empowerment. But every conference you are there, what are you looking for? You will hear power of the age to come. The age you are in, you have not lived it. Say, I, I, I must step into this immortality something. Everyone you are looking up to, they won't tell you. Because especially preachers, the job is to preach the good news. And not the news of their own life. So they will start, most people telling you God is faithful in their own life. They said it too much. That's why it came out of their mouth. 
if you want to really know a preacher, listen to the things he's saying as meditative statements. Those are things he's muttering before God. You get it through now to tame his mind. Do you get what I'm saying now? I'm not saying people come to put their emotions on the pulpit, but you may not separate people's meditative life from them. So the man is standing before you. He's telling you there is nothing God cannot do. That's not the topic of the teaching. The topic of the teaching is far above principality, but he's saying there is nothing God cannot do. Do you understand our message now? You, you are saying, wow, it's all these pastors where God don't help. Now, I understand how it feels like, because sometimes, and life is so hard for people that don't see clearly. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? We're having a discussion one day, and you know, somebody threw something at me, and said, oh, you, this pastor, you have money, Joe. You know, we're talking, he said, he said, now said, it's as you people grow that you have money, that you have studied the pattern. I was like, really? He said, the money, ah, nah. He shall, he shall, you know that kind of. So I now said, why do you think so? Then he told me, he said, just imagine this kind of church and everybody just pays 1,000 naira. So we calculated. I said, wow, you think that's what happens? So I now said, he attends a, a big church in Leia. I said, go to your church. They know you. Say, ask them how much they used to run for in a week. He was surprised, surprised that they do fuel over one million every day. So I now said, that your calculation we did. Remove it from like 7.5 million. He said, ha. I said, ha. You understand? So it's that stamina that that preacher had. There are some things you will hear. You that you're complaining, you, your, your complaint will melt. You say, if you know how much I used to buy fuel, then that fuel for a whole year, they use it for like three days. You know, sometimes you will enter off, you say, ah, God is here. It's AC that is there, not God. You are so don't beat you, eh? Now, that presence that you felt is a function of a stamina. If the nation is this way, it affects everybody too, yes or not. Thief will steal, I know. Banks will steal. They will be removing stamp duty. When they didn't stamp nothing, they, they will stamp on Saturday when everybody is at home. So GTB will stamp the account and still remove money. But you know that it takes strength to show up. The people you are saying, wow, in this economy, they are still here. They are not there because they had cash. They had stamina. A wise man said, tough times don't last. He said, tough people do. Why are they tough? Not terrible looking people. Toughness is not, you, you lack joy. Tough people intrinsically. The people have, they, they can withstand those things as if nothing was happening. You may need to go back home again and check properly. All the accounts of people in scripture that led their generation, you will see strength as the advantage. Not necessarily gifts. See, but God is saving many of you from the day your, your video will first go everywhere. That's when you will know what witchcraft is. You will see that you just feel like this. You know, you say, hmm, Syria. That Syria you did is an attack. There are people that just pick your picture and Im imagine terrible things. Someone just said, thief. You know you might end up stealing if you are not careful. I know you look at me and say, what is warfare? Casting down every imagination. Is that not it? Respect people that their pictures are everywhere. There is a stamina they have. Are you still in church? Go and read Paul's life and see the revelation of strength. You will see Paul will, will, Paul will disappoint you. The place where you think Paul will do, oh, Sakamura. You will see Paul steady and send prayers through Luke. And say, I know that your prayers will work out deliverance for me. You don't understand. You have seen him thank people for maybe their goodwill they sent. You will hear on the strength of that thing he persevered this season. Paul. Paul. Wow. His strength. You are selling this torch. Who will buy this torch now? People that have no idea will be checking time. You know the thing is going quiet, quiet. You understand? Why will you buy this torch? You will buy Kunu instead of this torch. Now, nobody has bought this torch from you. What are you saying? Ah, I need to show for favor. What's your problem? Why can't, do you understand that kind of stuff? Some of you have not held on to anything for long before. Nothing before. Little opposition, you are defeated. They just change the policy, you are gone. Let someone just, sometimes people are nice to you. They say hi to you, they play with you. Then you wake up one day, they are no more saying hi. Sometimes people are going through stuff. It's not always like you did something. You ask them, are you good? What happened? They say, I'm fine. You know, you, you can tell this person is worried. Selfishness, it didn't concern you. You say, ah, if you pack your mats, God will bring. Bro, that was your eternal destiny about. Not everybody is in your life. Oh. Some people hold the keys of many seasons in your life. Now, you are the one that is not greeting the person. Then I came and say hi. You say, ah, 
see, madam, I don't, I can't, I don't want to greet you tomorrow. And the person like, ah, what's, do you get that kind of stuff now? Ordinary stamina relationship you don't have. Stamina. Now, if I say relationship, don't go and wait with a boy that can't buy boxers talking to you anyhow. Do you understand? Until they buy boxers for him, he can't change on that way. Do you understand? Then he's telling you, if you leave me, what your eyes will see. Your eyes will see the goodness of God. Do you understand that kind of thing? So, stamina does not mean you go and stay fully. Do you get what I'm saying? What somebody saying? Hmm, mm, let me go back to Tunji. What I lacked was stamina. That's not that stamina. Do you understand? Real stamina. That this thing is God ordained, is your role and contribution. Do you understand now? And Satan will want to weary you. Stamina. So, because of time, the Bible says, out of weakness, they were what? They were made strength. One thing, that word weakness there, I wrote the word out, is the word like asthenia. What it means is frailty. David will always tell you, Lord, you know how frail I am. It's in your scripture. Frailty is not first seen as an action. It's seen as a nature. That I'm a human. There are many mistakes I will make in life because of weakness. But when you refuse to yield that weakness to God, it becomes wickedness. Before people start breaking people's hearts, they will first break God's hearts. I hope you understand now. How you, you are hurt, go and talk to Jesus. If people offend you, don't talk to them first until you have prayed for them. I, I've told you that before. You go and talk to who, who really, he will slap you. Someone, someone slap you first time. You're not going to tell him in the evening. He will beat you in the night again. There is a, do you understand? You don't call that so you have not interceded for. So if you go to Jesus, part of what you learn to say is, Lord, talk to this person. And if you go, it doesn't answer. The Bible says, look for two elders or people they will listen to. Now, hold on. The Bible teaches us that when you find a weakness in you to be easily offended, do you understand now? Sometimes, you know, people did not, but you, are, you say, well, I've been offended. For, you know, it says, go to, go to him. He has this technology of turning that weakness into stamina. When you refuse to go, it becomes wickedness. So intentionally, you'll be taking offense even when people don't talk to you. Do you know that lady who, who goes by that name? That grammars of people tell you their hearts. Once people's grammar is very hard to understand, do you know who goes by that name? You see, it's too long. Ah, who is that? It's simple. Be studying them. Then they now describe person. Ah, that brother that stays. <laughs> you know, you're like, ah, what happened now? That guy no game morals. How? He never greeted me before. Like who didn't greet you too can offend you? you know, just imagine that who I have not spoken to and you are offended. And you don't know there's a demon living in you. If, if, because before I can take offense, we must have related, true or not. You say, I just used to hate him. I, I don't like to see him. He has become wickedness. So did they, many of you, they now, you now hear someone say, do you talk to this person? say, no. I, I spoke to him about you, the way you reacted. Maybe you should start greeting him. Don't mind them. The first day you go and say, good afternoon, you hear? Good what? Is it today I just see me in this ministry? Before you came, you were here. The child you sat, I bought. You know that kind of stuff. The person is a wicked person. And it takes a, do you get what I'm saying? That person refused. He's this kind of people that will start things in anger, but can't go for long. That's why people, you hear things like, nobody's reading my post. Who should read the post? Who did you buy data for around the world that should be reading the post? People read what is provision for them. That means they have a way their life should be. What you wrote is for a people. You, you wrote out of wickedness. That means everybody that is leading you has a weakness, as it were. But why they can stand tall is that it was submitted for conversion. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 40 something, I help me find, it said, The spirit of a man, maybe Proverbs 18, 14 or 44, I didn't scribble it properly. It says, The spirit of a man shall bear his what? His infirmity. Are we together now? The Bible now says, The Holy Ghost, in Romans chapter 8 and 26, he helps our what? That means if you don't submit the infirmity, your spirit can be bearing it. But there is a place where your human spirit is going to be shocked. And that infirmity will destroy you as iniquity. Iniquity is perpetual devotion to God's pattern. But the Bible says if you yield to the Holy Ghost, it can help your infirmity. The people that stand before you are people that their infirmities were helped. Who gets the flow now? I tell people, I say, people will say, church, you know, we were talking one time and all of that, someone. So the person now said to me, said, why do I've noticed that you don't put pastor, you know, the, you know, these forms you feel. You don't put pastor. I've never used pastor before, you know, any, any title. So I, I just said, I, I don't, before I talk, you say, ah, you, you are scared of us, but I, I'm like, 
you know, I will now, I did, you know, say, ah, because if you write pastor, if we catch you, I say, but I catch you, you know, I was like, yeah, you catch me. He said, well, pastor, a thief, pastor, a fraud. I said, wow. Do you understand that kind of stuff now? Do you know what is happening? I just said, I said, which church did you attend last? He mentioned, I said, go back there. He said, no, I said, wait. Just enter there and say, I forgive you. You will create a symbol, you'll be well. Because you agree or not, the pastor you are fighting self was hot. Does it not take hot to hurt other people? Like your type, plenty have come, done the same thing. The guy look at you and say, you look like, you know some people, once you look like someone, they will just avoid you. You don't know. There is a point you will get in life, you will say, I can't marry short people. If you are short, it's okay. You are redeemed by the blood. But you want sometimes. <laughs> Ask him, why can't you marry short people? My finger is not anywhere. I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> Why can't you marry short people? If you ask where they will trace it back to one short, you have people say short guys are wicked. No, don't act. You people make me feel like I'm just thinking. But you know it's true. So tall guys are good. Yeah, yes, when they are not fair. It's, it's so funny how there is always something. Do you, how do you know there is sometimes that somebody, the person refused. Do you get that kind of stuff now? The Holy Ghost couldn't help. He has become now wickedness. That he said, I cannot employ a short man. What if the short man is your destiny helper? I don't want to talk to cancel short, destiny helper. Is it simple? What if the short man is your husband? Those times I told somebody you marry a short man, she rejected. Now, now short man has come out. I, I, I will testify after the person does marriage finish. The guy is very brief. When he was, I told him to stand on my office, that elevation, before we speak, I was bending too much, as average as I am. I'm not joking. Very short man. And I'm happy. Prophecy fulfilled. That day she told me, God forbid in Jesus' name. I say, God forbid. Okay. Now, God forbid, there's an history. That short people are wicked. Short bread came. Do you understand? So let's get back to work. One thing you need to learn is that people reveal their what? Your strength. Do you know sometimes the person that is doing what you always go to buy is doing it sick? Sometimes they are doing after they had a breakdown. I hope you know. Are you aware? There is a brand, I will not talk about it. They make some kind of meals, a little bit trendy something. But this is how the brand operated. It started with the mother. You know, they used to make local products, edible. And then the son graduated, began to amplify, you understand? I'm, I'm being careful, I know, but the, the thing makes sense now. And then the mother now died this year. So somebody started writing, like, this, there's a taste near the taste of this stuff. I, I, that day I felt so bad, I said, I'm sure this man is grieving. You don't understand. He's still showing up doing that thing. Do you get that kind of stuff now? But he's not fine. You may not know, but that's the real meaning of strength. That's why the business didn't fold up. He has every right to tell you, he will come online and say, ah, oh, you people are wicked. Since the day my mother died and I didn't show up, you have gone to another vendor. That's what many of you do. Oh, guy, if you don't show up, people will grow up. By the time you come back, they will outgrow your contribution. It's very possible. I'm not saying die at the place of work. You know, let me say this thing funnily. Bishop Oedepo will tell you sometimes he's working. He said for like 30 something years, he has not had what does he say? You go away when you marry, you always want to do. You are praying that your husband. A vacation, vacay. Is vacation in the former is vacay now. Vacation is, is not an expensive place. Vacay. By the time you come back, um, okay, you understand? So, but just, you know, in answer for 30 something years, I've not gone on vacation. You know, it's nice. I was like, you know, when you hear some things, even you'll be like, what have I done? He was just saying since the ministry began, all of that, he said something, said, then he now said, no stress, you understand? That day he was talking, I know he did not sleep well. So, as you say, no stress, the stress is saying, I am here. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know what is happening? That's the proof of strength. The man is saying no stress. You, if you see that video, even if you don't know nothing about medics, you know this person is under stress. So why did he show up? You know there's something these fathers know why they keep showing up. They have every right now to do what? To back out now. Don't you, don't you think so? Yes, now, they have every right. There are people now. You see the way some of these people walk. I hope you know. 
you know sometimes they help them climb staircase with style? Some of you cannot do the visions of God. You wouldn't need to go that far to tell God I can't do it anymore. You say, God, you see that to carry this leg, you understand? You get this to, to even. Some people are not, they don't talk about these things. They are preachers that try to look so perfect. Do you understand? There was one time Apostle Aaron, someone said he was saying people should pray for his leg. Whoever saw that kind of video before? Nobody did. Yes, I'm talking publicly. I think he was in Lagos or something. And do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that day he still stood for hours. But he said, pray for my, what is happening? If, if you are saying I should pray for the leg, go and rest it. The people say, no, there is something more than this leg. Do you understand that kind of stuff now? I'm not saying you should walk and die, but I'm saying walk and live. Do you get what I'm saying now? I'm not saying walk and die, but I'm saying walk and do what? Walk and live. If you yield your weaknesses, all of us are body bags of infirmity because of the fallen nature in us. That man you're saying, very good person, good character. He was not always that good. And the wine is going to taste better as he ages in the Lord. Do you understand that kind of stuff now? Which means better versions will evolve if you stay at that place of weakness, don't strength. Are you in church now? Many of you are not interested. Your weakness have become wickedness. You hate to see people prosper for no reason. You know, it's so funny how people, people just, and you're, you're watching them like, really? Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10. Ephesians 6 and verses 10. I'm going to really stop at 2 Timothy 2 and, and we begin to pray for strength. Is that fine? And stamina. Is he okay? The next week we will continue. Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10. I like Amplified Classic so much. The KJV says, Finally, my brethren, want to go. Be strong in the Lord, which is the power of his might. You see, the power of might means, how, do you get what I'm saying now? The power of his might. Amplified will say, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. In bracket, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. The Bible says, draw your strength from what? Your union with the Christ. Not draw your strength from the comments on your Facebook and the likes. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? I thought now, not draw your strength from people's bodily reaction to what you are saying. You have to be too convicted beyond the reception. I'm not saying don't care about the receptivity, but I'm saying the reception cannot. Do you get what I'm saying now? You can't send me back to God like we didn't know what we came to say. I may need to say it properly. Utterance is not oratory. Do you understand now? The utterance shall always be right. My oration, you may not like my oration, and you may not have to like me for a long time because I will say the truth. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. So what are we trying to say in this room right now? You must come to a point in your life where, where you draw strength from. It's not people clapping you on or telling you now, where's done? Your ministry has changed me. Be careful. The day you don't hear it anymore, you think you have stopped doing what is correct. People can be offended. I said, I sent him mail three times. He doesn't answer. Fake man of God. You don't know. Someone told me, I have sent you text. You are a fake man of God. Uh -uh. I say, wow. Text and SMS. The Bible needs to be updated. Uh, these are the signs of fake people. They don't reply. They don't reply text. You would think that what I said is that simple. If you don't know what I've taught you earlier. All those ones, they are, they are, they are, they are baby steps in this journey. There are people that will look at you. And I've always said this from scratch of this ministry. Because when God called me, I didn't know so much about theology in quotes. Do you understand now? I grew up in a church also that taught you like they taught, they taught me as they taught us the same way. It was the same curriculum of, for example, rapture as escapism. Do you understand now? You don't know how much of work people have done to themselves to now stand back to be able to lead. It was the same system that produced all of us. Not like I had a special education. Same thing. The priest came from amongst you. And then when God called the man, what was correct was his grace. I hope you understand now. There was an empowerment of heaven upon his life that was true and accurate, but his theology may not be perfected. There are people, when Satan wants to destroy you and get to your heart so fast, he raises people that are superior in theology and try to fault your grace dimension. You will need stamina to learn in the face of criticism, yet appeal the dimension as it were, that this one is not fake. This one is not that they, they didn't put oil on me to get it. This one was part of the legitimacy for coming into this assignment. My theology may need some upgrade. I may need to go and read on eschatology properly again. Do you get what I'm saying now? Yeah. But you have to be careful. 
draw strength from your union. Sometimes I listen to some articles I write, I'll smile. You understand? You know, you just smile. I'm like, wow. Because this version of you now is saying wow. Wow does not mean wow, wow. You understand? Uh, there's a wow that's, <laughs> uh, whoa, really? Wow. <laughs> you get that kind of stuff now. And somebody will say, will you rewrite it? Leave it as a memorial. There's something that in those to you after five years later. You don't understand. That's why some nonsense boys will pick a preacher's six-year message and try to fought a six-year after version that has gone through series of, do you get, I agree that if the teaching, you find that is wrong, come out, make a public correction and bring that one down. But see, people are not always wrong like you think. They just spoke according to how they understand at that phase in their life. You know the most funniest part? You need stamina to serve a generation. They are the ones trying to say you are fake. The people are the ones trying to say, look at what they said. Somebody's looking for an hero. Do, do, you need stamina. To even know that person is going to be a better evangelist. If you stay strong enough. Most people fighting you will still serve under your assignment. Just give it time. Strong stamina. You have somebody say, I hated you so much that I came close. Do you know how much stamina it takes to wait for who hates you to come close? The first thing is the doubt is coming to hurt you. It takes strength. Too. You don't understand now. I'm not talking fiscal issue. I'm not talking it holds a club. Is a, is, a, is a wet tongue, tongue looking for blood to suck. Bad mouth. You have an assignment to train your human spirit. What did I say now? Draw strength. Union means you will train. I've taught the teaching, training your human spirit, parts one to three. Or I don't know, maybe till four. Go and listen. It's not your pastor's job to train your human spirit. All this thing in the church, I'm not growing. It's not your pastor's job to grow you. Is your pastor's job to build a curriculum? Is your job to make it bespoke for your growth? I hope you are aware. Okay? You are going to be exposed to a generation of people. And this is my own worry. I'm not trying to make you unnecessarily, you know, at some alert. No. You are going to be exposed to a group of people called the generation that God is sending you to serve. True or not? And you will need something. The spirit bear witness with our spirit. It's in your scripture. Draw strength from the spirit bear with my spirit. You will need to know who is who and who is right and who is not. In this body of Christ, I'm not talking sons of darkness. We're talking when I said there are people today you are calling fake. Their error was association. I hope you know. They, they are not fake people. Their error was just they, they quickly ran to people that came first. Sometimes what comes first is not God. That's where sacrifice the first one. Learn it as a law. As the first millionaire came, they ran. I hope you understand. They now found out he's an occultic person. Then they said, he's the pastor of that occultic. For, there are churches that forever and ever, they cannot pray anymore. I hope you know. Only one incident happened. That's who they are, according to people. You need stamina to know. Spirit bears witness with my spirit. I hope you understand now. Oh, somebody is going to look so powerful. Spirit, bear witness with my spirit. Somebody will come with some dimension. Spirit, bear witness with my spirit. Because even the angels of darkness will transform themselves. You know, that word is so powerful. They didn't say we change. They say we transform. It's painful. They will try to do like what you went through for 13 years. In 13 seconds. And act before you. Do you understand? You must have this sustained stamina to tell this is not correct. The stamina to hold on with all his resonance and vibration and not be implicated in your soul. Do you know what it means for someone that has dark energy to stay with you? And you have stamina to, do you, as I'm discerning him, you are gone. Why are you are discerning? You are discerning a, a terrible warlord. You think it's possible. He will cast terrible energies around you. You would, that's not the business for today. Don't, let's, let's just focus. Is somebody in church now? He said, I've been studying him for a while. I want to know his doctrine. Something that you already believed. Very strong influence. If you say, ah, it's true, it's true, very true, very true. There's something, ah, this man is saying something that Papa is not saying. This is true. Spare, don't catch you. It's the spirit that bears witness, not your soul. Be a, don't risk it. That's your he or she. You get the flow now. Don't! When the Bible says, test all spirits, is the word dokimazu, I believe. It says, prove. Ah, it's a spirit to spirit something, no? Is somebody in church this evening? It's not a solely cow. So when he talks, there's this. When he talks, this way my body chills. And you think that's God? An AC can do it well now. Let them lock you in my office and put it at 16 degree Celsius. You will chill. 
they go need a pola, you understand, that can to dissolve you, as it were. So every time you talk, something in me leaps. What is leaping? I hope it's not what God wants to take away. You need spirit to spirit. Somebody told me one time and said, there's one, somebody coming to Abuja, some for one powerful meeting, Papa. He said, one of your tongues look like his tongue. I think you should be there. I said, Jesus Christ. And this one too will be saying, you are my father, you are my father. He said, which kind of song is this one? This one is sunlight. So I, I now say, send me evidence. He sends. I'm not saying anything, no, but what you need is spirit to spirit to spirit. I have deleted the tongues. I don't know how it came. I've returned back to where it came from. Some of you just hear construction. Cut to. You say, ah, say people they will. Or God, people day, but people where you know, I don't know how to speak PG where I was learning, that's why I started saying it. Where you know, go day, day. Do you understand? You must not deal with them. Do you understand that kind of stuff? <laughs> don't remove my teeth, I beg. No gather day. Do you understand? Yeah, so. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1. Let's stop here. 843. Some of you are looking at me tonight like. So all this thing now, how does it concern you? It concerns you in two ways. Even if you are not conscious, you are an innovation of a generation. I hope you understand. That may have failed God. Which means that how you will live life is just a better version of that which failed God. There's a need for a proper breakdown and re-engineering. Do you understand what I'm trying to say out there now? You need to go back home and find who carries this body. Who does what? There are issues that we face this body that if you are not convinced in the Lord, you will adopt it as your person's issue. You get the flow now. Let's say, for example, bad example, but you, they say someone has a kidney issue. Does he have a solution or not? Yes. The height of it is transplant. Am I correct? Hold on. That means if things go wrong in this body, it, but once the man will to die, lost willpower, what do you think will happen? Even if everything, people that are able died, no any issue anywhere. Did autopsy and they didn't see, they say basic, they just say short fever. You have not seen it before. And people are like, ah, why? Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1. Because some of you are convincing yourself that the effects of your body is you. Do you understand? That's why somebody will say, for example, I am a fornicator. I'm not saying people should not be holistic, but sometimes the things I wish to do, I don't find myself doing. Do you get the flow now? Which means the spirit wills, but the flesh was weak. And the weakness of the flesh not submitted, overpowered. Don't now convince yourself you are that weakness. The real you is the one that is converted. We have born names that God didn't call us. You never said, I am light before. You never said it. You have never said, I am salt before. Never, you have never said it, but I am a thief. I am a, I mean, you know, and sometimes we make it feel like it's a way to touch God. Oh God, they didn't say confess it, they say submit it. That confession is not submit, submit, drop it. And they will chisel, is that same thing they will chisel. Apostle Paul says, I, Paul, who was formerly a killer, he says, but those things I did in ignorance. It's in your scripture. The Bible says, the days of ignorance, God is going to overlook. It's so funny how, if you know what I'm telling you right now, people will say you don't deserve that thing, but the page has flipped. What they are seeing now is strength. So even if you say it's fake, there is stamina. I don't know if you understand. And you never say, I deserve. No. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1. One to go with everybody. Paul was talking to his son Timothy in the gospel. He said, Thou therefore, my son, specifically, be strong in what? Do you see that now? He was careful. The grace there means, you know, empowerment like a gift, but in Christ. Because there are many empowerments that is not necessarily in Christ. What is he saying? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. We're going to begin to ask the Lord for strength and stamina. I believe in my heart that there's a lot of people listening to me that what they need at this phase is stamina. The, the seed of God is with them, but they don't have the stamina to, to watch it grow. There are seeds that if you plant, it takes time before it grows. True or not? You know, there's this, if you plant means now, it will come out, cowpea, beans, come out. There are some seed if you plant, you are going to give it weeks, as it were. Maybe like pear, avocado pear. Like, will, will this thing not grow? Will this thing not grow? What you go through in life is a function of where you are going to. And it's not a rhyme, it's the truth. That's why when people have shallow preparation, they are not going anywhere so far. Don't let people that get there so fast always convince you they are better. Sometimes it, you, get, you still need to sustain what they have built. You will be the reason why they will carry on as it were. I'm telling you the truth of, of God's gospel. 
Ephesians 4, 7. As touching grace, you want to be strong in. Paul was trying to, he said, but unto every one of us is giving grace. All Christians have a grace, but it's according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What's the gift of Christ? If you read down, he gave some apostles. So you can't really find the grace in a Christian. It must be broken through. Do you get the flow of thought? Many Christians don't believe this. The grace you pedestered with was the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that makes for salvation. The grace of God that makes for salvation has appeared unto all men. When you see any empowerment that is in Christ, I'm not saying there are empowerments that is a function of biological reality. Find, I taught the workforce people the scripture of Timothy and his grandmother. Find that scripture for me, please. Let me show you something. So you can separate the things that was in your father's lineage from the one that is in the church you are part of. It's not the same thing. Will you find it for me? It's a book of I hope I'm correct. Just a little bit of patience. Because some of you think everything is grace. You call talent grace. Talents are not grace. Do you get the flow now? When you refine talent, it becomes skill. Grace. And we will still get there next week. Before you ask for the anointing, there are four things that must have been in your life. Anointing is endorsement for an empowerment. Many people don't have empowerment. They have been in anointing service. Take the anointing, amen, to endorse you for what? Nothing. Then they go to four people that they should stand and be meeting down. Someone that you should think the platform, you are falling him down. Some of you, when they remember you, they just think you're an identity. Because everything you did with God's empowerment in your life was, was just rascality as it were for being young in Christ. Some of you need to take a repentance of proper sequential growth in Christ. Do you understand now? Some people don't believe you're intelligent. I hope you know. They believe that you don't, you are a non-intelligent person, God's power, like that. They just see you like, I, you know I'm saying the truth. Some of you know I'm saying the truth. Some of you brothers here, you know, if they say partner, you say power what? Be a power only. You will say it instantly because subconsciously. And that's the man saying, we will take the word. You see, it's a fallacy. I'm big with you. Yes. Imagine they say your pastor is so intelligent. What will you say? What will you say yourself? You say, uh-uh. Why did, so the people leading you, you get the flow now. Religion takes your brain away. Real life in Christ empowers that which God has put in you. Are you getting the difference now? Okay, the choice is yours. One to go. Let's read carefully. The same Timothy, he says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that is in you also. Paul carefully said there was something in grandma. That was in your mama too. Do you understand now? And it came. It didn't say grace. But it says son. The grace came through your gift of Christ. Separate them. There are things. That's why the grace is coming to empower all of the systems. Go better around your life. There is talent. There is gift. There is. Do you get what I'm saying for now? There is a grace that you stand strong in. That's why people that you see. They, 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 are, they are dispensers of that grace. They are not just dispensers of academia strength. It's not just. This guy has read economics well. No, there is a grace for wealth. If the grace is not there, God will not open the curriculum for that individual. Do you get the flow now? This thing is not read economics well, then say you want to teach kingdom economics. No, the wealth is first there. You are now reading to catch up with that grace. You are, you are theologizing to catch up with that empowerment. So, people that hold their generation a role are graced people. Not just educated people. The gospel can be known even by uneducated people, true or not. Which means awakening also captures people that didn't go to school. If not, how will some of our parents get to heaven? In courts, they have the wisdom of civilization, but they didn't go to school properly. And there was a pastor sent to them. And he did ministry properly and well. So in case you are thinking, I need some MSC to, to be, it's not correct. But when you now get the assignment, you need MSC to defend it. There are places you will enter when they see that stuff. So many of you think grace is that thing that you are seeing. My dad used to play guitar, then he says it's grace. You just say, me I'm playing guitar, so he says, I have grace to play. You know, today, when somebody wins BB Niger, it's grace. The person was naked all through. He wins 30 minutes, say it's grace. When they beat Nigeria in Afcon, it's grace. Once somebody buy account on Instagram, you tap into grace. You see. Let them not show picture of anything. Wow, I tap into grace. Like I used to say, you are a better palm wine person. You will have done well selling palm wine than believing on God's promises. Graces are not some things that you are going to be tapping everywhere. We will still get to the point of fathers. Graces are living realities that come upon your life in honor 
of the context of the gift of God that you received. Which means that is an empowerment for an assignment. Who gets the flow? Every week in church, the enlightenment is to help you maximize the grace and empowerment. There is a grace upon your destiny. You may not believe it. That's why you can't be mixing teachings. I'm not, you can listen to anyone on subjects and parts. The teaching is for an it's called enlightenment, and the spirit entered me while he spoke to me. So he will keep speaking because of what has entered. The next thing God is saying is because is a next class for what has entered. You can't cherry pick what you like to hear. It's not possible. Of course. The man that wants to save the world, fighting spiritual husband, spirit, spirit husband. And you fight spirit husband because of a theology. I hope you know. It's, do you get? Am I saying it's not real? It's real, but it's not reality. The name is demon. Every demon can be cast out. I can't build portfolio for what is not consistent in scripture. What verse will I use? Tell me the matriarch in Bible that fought spirit husband. Show me your, your lineage inside scripture. Even Ruth didn't fight spirit husband. You don't understand? Pe do you get what I'm saying? Ruth did not fight spirit husband. It's so funny how we find ourselves here. You may have heard somebody say, don't let your pastor use your head. It's not even true. A real pastor cannot use your head. A real pastor maximizes what God puts before him. If you met a fake man, heal up and find an original one. The truth remains the fact there was a grace. It was a function of the gift of Christ. Did you get the message? It's time to pray. Let's pray. Like five minutes left. And we want to maximize this timing. I have said a lot of things tonight just to push you to the path of strength. And let you know your generation is waiting for strength. Not display of power. Strength. Stamina. Stamina. I think the scripture says, I wish I can remember. You know, some Yoruba versions stick more. Like the Bible says, better is the end of the thing than the beginning. I think that's the English translation. It's not to start that is the problem, true or not. Uh, to design low God's things is, is to stay and defend. Because once you begin to build institution, this is what you are doing. There is this game you will see male cows, bulls. Somebody will hold close. Then the bull will run. That's what this thing is. Once you do like this, the covenant of life. Satan will leave everybody captured in her and face you. That's what you are doing. Something network. You are now wondering why your life is the way it is. You think Satan is going after logos? He's going after thought intentions. Going after roles in generations. And you will need stamina because sometimes God will not cause you to totally escape that knock. Yeah. Truly so. Some people need to go through some things first so that they, there's a way you make up your mind next. When things eat you well, there are some decisions you will make. You will later be finding scripture to justify it. People will say, but you are too hard on yourself. You get the flow now. So, so, do you get what I'm saying? Sometimes you are, you are just fearful. It's not like you are contextually fearful. You need stamina. That's which God has shown you. How long can you do it? Do you understand? Uh, really so, uh, how long? And we may need to still check if what you want to do is consistent with the will of God. Because in many cases, it's not even God. How do I know it's not God? You don't even know you. Once you don't know who you are, what you said cannot be trusted. The Bible says God knows he's God. And then there was nobody who could swear by. So he swore by himself. It's in your scripture. You don't know who you are. You want me to trust you. If you are not bread of life, I, do you get what I'm saying now? He says, your father hates bread, manna. He said, but this one is a bread that came from heaven. This is the life. Oh, help me. The way, the truth, and life. Read Jesus. Clarity of what lived in the hurting vessel. Are you still in church now? Very clear. So generations, we can lay hold on that reality. Ah, that I am resurrection and life. Even you know the effect it does to you. You say, because of this, I overcome death. Can you see what you are saying now? That's what it means a generation emerged and they have their leaders. That's exactly what you are saying. No, you just think because I've learned how to do coins. So we lead, you, who are you leading? You, you lead who? We can decide never to use what you did. But we can't ignore grace. We can't ignore products. Who gets the flow now? Can choose to we can say this church from tomorrow. We don't use cameras anymore. A time a church they use TVs. Did they die? They chose we don't want they are using now is fine, but they didn't use it then. Some of you are just you are banking on things ephemeral, things that 
I told you that value is not just what you think is nice. It's what the people you are sent to serve will receive as value. It solves their problem. You, you, you are not, you are in a generational context. Don't just wake up and do what you like. No. Some of you have been Christians for a while. You never maximized grace before. You believe in skill than grace. You believe in anything else than grace. No, don't do that too. Even the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Are you in church? Uh -huh. Somebody's coming to a place of strength. Someone in this room needs to cry out for strength. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am stronger. Because sometimes it's not, I am strong. You are not still weak. Let the weak say, I am stronger. Out of weaknesses, strength was made out of weaknesses out of weaknesses out of weaknesses their strengths were forged out of weaknesses their strengths were forged out of weaknesses their strengths were forged everyone standing you are seeing their revelations of strength not just of no strength stamina to pull through Come on, stretch. Come on, stretch. Come on, stretch. There is that which a people will see, but you are still going to carry it for how long you become transformed for it. God did right time as it were. God wrote transformation as time. And with the rate at which you are going, it may be seven years more, four more years, three years, two years, some ten years. Some of you will say, nobody is using what I'm doing. God is saving you. Do you know what competitors do? At least you have seen all this Premier League footballer do spell. There was a picture that came out one time. True or not? African Cup, you see keeper, you spell. Is he a lie? The person that wants to come and play with you is using jazz. Sometimes when God does not answer your prayer, he's just preserving everything. He's only preserving next level. Because God knows, today you come on camera, they just say, this is this, who is he born, king of, is it this one? Bam! Then they, they get the person out. And God says, it's better to be in obscurity. Why you are fixing this deep reality question? What is my role and contribution to a generation? It takes stamina to remain on. Are you still with me at all? For long. It takes stamina to do something. You may, you may have some power somewhere. Just, just make some one million and start something. It takes a stamina of a millionaire to keep it running. I'm crying for strength. I'm sure there's someone in this room. Your life is dependent on this session of prayer. And that's why I'm giving you some more time. My time is gone. But I'm intentional with you. I know that you are at the mercy of this programming. I'm sure. I know. You are like almost giving up. This one is not on God, but it's on the thing that God said. It's just like, is it really worth it? What will I make out of this? Am I sure I know what I'm doing? When you begin to see yourself like what you once hated to please God, start saying what you stop saying that pleased God. You may need to check again. And the Bible says that my son, be strong in this grace, be strong in this empowerment, be strong in these dimensions. 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 Shatta barakita si fahada fanash. Barastos is a fanista sanis. Embras kabarades is a fanistas. Shatta barakita si fahai. It's time to stretch. It's one on one with your maker. One on one with your maker. Stamina, stamina, stamina. Some of you are students. You prayed before you took that course. You will see your position. How do I choose a course? When you know who you are and what you will contribute, you take courses that develop you mentally in that regards. There's only for a prophet telling you read accountancy when you are a science student. No, there are no, no, no dramas to these things. Now you are studying that engineering course because you are for perception. You know God said, Satan will wait there to weary you. The Bible says we should not be weary in well-doing. It says if we persevere, he said we will reap. Stamina. Stamina. There is a stamina a prophet's ministry need. Prophets will prophesy things and it will almost not come to pass. Jeremiah prophesied this exile thing and the redemption. They took him into slavery also. Do you know what it means to be waiting for what God said through your mouth to happen? Stamina. And you stick him and say something else. And there is one that has not happened. Come on. 
You take his gift. Stamina. You are stretching. Stretching. You are stretching intentionally. Two or three minutes more, you are stretching. You are shutting down 905. Stretch, stretch. Draw strength, draw strength. It's easier this time. You are drawing straight from the corporate dimension of unionism right now. For God is in this place and you know it. Sound priest. Draw some strength, draw some strength, draw strength more than for a week, draw strength for more than a year, draw strength beyond 2024. Come on, when Elijah was giving up, the angel woke him up and said, Wake and eat. He, had, he woke him again and said, Eat for the journey is far, eat, draw stamina from your union. I hope it's the same thing we are doing. Let me go first. Even if the altars of God descend right here now, how long can you hold to the horn? You get the question. How much of stamina do you have? What if someone comes and says, you are using a demonic spirit? You think, you think it will not affect you? You must have drunk capacity. Come on! You are not listening to a weak man. You are not listening to a weak leader. You are supposed to be bold people. Strengthen people. Men of stature and stamina. Stature is wisdom. Stature is not drama. Wisdom. There is a grace. There are graces evident. You are basking in that euphoria. Modern salvation is here. Grace. Grace, grace. I see grace. All I see is grace. I see grace, all I see is grace, great grace, all I see is grace, I see grace, all I see is grace, great grace. All I see is grace. I see grace. So imagine for three minutes, you want to imagine, oh, and please imagine Jesus on the cross. The Bible says, he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means my father, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, and he's hanging there. In the beginning was the word, because God is understood except by the word, true or not. So the word is now here for the first time. God is living out of that word. 
How long will you have stayed on that cross if you are Jesus? Do you know you will run away to return back into a default mode you are used to? How long will you have stayed? The Bible makes us understand that he prayed the prayer at Gethsemane and said, Lord, if it be thy will, is in your scripture, let this cup pass over me. He said, but you know, not my will, but wait, what was he always doing before the Gethsemane day? So there is a kind of installation the Holy Ghost should have been doing in your life before you understood who you really are. We learned that he always goes in the night to separate himself. Is it true or not? Pray. It was in not the same mode he prayed also that ushered in, not my will, but your will. You must have been found in your life the tools needed for your destiny, even before awareness, to prove God was with you on that journey. If you came to the point of the empowerment in the days of your conscious, you know, cognitive enlightenment, you, your journey will be so far. And God is not going to rush anybody. The day you find out who you are, your journey just started. It's like going back to age one. I don't know if you understand now. God will say, yeah, let's money from there. Because everything is going to be redefined once you find definition. Everything. This is how people marry drunk. They don't know them, but they found who they think they know they are a wife for it. How? Oh, I'm a millionaire. Who is a millionaire? He thinks once you have one name in your account. No. A millionaire is who can give it as a system. Can produce. If it goes broke, make products, make it back. Not who has one. That if GTB take 15 hour stamp duty, it becomes 999 and then it begins to fight in the bank. That's not a millionaire. So he says, I'm a millionaire. And I need a wife that manage a million dollars. God says the real you actually is not a financier. The real you actually is a prophet of God. Imagine you married a wife that is so interested in being a man of God's wife. You see that you're already in trouble. So the day, that's what happened to many people. They said, I will never marry a pastor. Then when they married the man, two years after, he now found himself. Ah! Now the man is entering the court. The woman says, I will never follow you. And if she's a very, very terrible woman, she will divorce. Imagine how will you, what stamina will help you start a walk after divorce. Even you can't convince yourself. Then you say, can it be God? If it's God, will she have left me? Why couldn't God tell her? Have you seen, you see the questions we ask when we ourselves don't know who we are? If you are Jesus, how long will you have stayed there? They have nailed you. And you will not die because of, yeah, yeah. It's not enough. He even said, Father, forgive them. No, be, be imagining you now. You, you will say, Father, you will first curse them. Say, as you did to me, your next, those they sent you to save. The Bible says, and he gave up the ghost. True or not? And he ensured prophecies were fulfilled. None of his bones were broken. They dropped him down, buried him. Are you still in church at all now? Can you really stay those three days if you are Jesus? The Bible says, and God came to resurrect him. Is in your Bible? Say, for he will not. Do you know what it means to wait on God in the grave? And when God woke him up, God didn't fight for him. He by himself preached in the this. You don't understand. And say all authority. God didn't help him. Oh, come on. And when he's done, God says, come. Let me see the effect of your work in a generation. The Bible said, they say, brethren, why look up all of that? The same way you see him. And he left a church with a man that left the assignment. Little children, have you caught any fish? Is it not a risk? Okay. If you don't plan life properly, all this drama you're doing in your early age will just be a total waste of time. You will build companies your firstborn will not meet. You will do things your wife... Do you get kind of stuff now? Things that will never outlive you. That's not God's plan for you. God's plan is you are transgenerational because you showed your strength to your generation and the power to generations to come. I prophesy over your life, the day of your weakness will never come. And you have to learn never to see that day. Because you will be weak a lot of times. But once you know that you are not designed to be weak, it's an anomaly... You, we talk about me by in biography. Uh, my, what, what's that course called again? Shapeless something. You even know shapeless self is a shape somehow, somehow. They try to draw this book. You still see a shape there. True or not? Now imagine they say you are amoeba. Is it possible? You can't be convinced because of course you have come to know you. Does it make some sense now? What if one of my legs were broken? Your image is more than the leg that is broken. It will superimpose it. Who gets the flow now? This is what happens to people. Let me lose my hand. Unfortunately, I have found me. So... Do you get what I'm saying? That's what happens. See, you kill people. Their image cannot go. But our empowerments today are because of, the, do you get now, that Satan can touch in a millisecond. You think pastors don't go sick? Who told you that? Are, are you sure of what you are saying? Because people don't say what happens to them. 
come on now. A man can't be leading plenty of people and you think as priesthood, your attacks won't be hitting him. You get the flow now. It's how strong a man is. Stamina. I pray for you. There is stamina for you. Some of you will go back to God for the first time. And this is the sacrifice for stamina. Things. Lord, give me house. Give me house. No. Lord, grant me stamina to get there. Who, who will use that kind of house I saw? I receive stamina for transformation. Growth is painful, but I receive grace. Your convictions will cost you. People will hate you for it. They will feel like you are a bad preacher. You understand now? They will say you are, you are legalistic, but that's your conviction. You need stamina to defend your conviction. This is the message. You can't change it. The Bible says, and the Lord following, confirming the words. I've seen enough signs to prove that God sent me. You may not like it. You are one of 8 billion people. Your child will. Give yourself time. He will choose never to be like you. I promise you before time. You need stamina before a marriage. Make a child. The child grows. See, what I said is stamina. You think I'm insulting. It's called stamina. I can give you 25 years and I'm still here. I will weary you out. You will tell your child, listen to him. Oh, I said this rubbish when I was young. Don't be like me. It takes time. What did Bishop Oedebo do? Uh, Southwest, they used to call him ritualist now. True or not? Don't act like you don't know. They may clap for me in Florida and Tampa. In Nigeria, here, yeah, good states. Ah, they say white, white. That you, is he a lie? The man weeded all of them out with their children now. We are for all our time. If you mistakenly watch Pastor Chris those days, there's a slap they will give you when you do you get that kind of stuff now. Today, they will eat everybody out. Stamina. You are just too young to give up. What do I say now? How old are you? You are giving up. They broke your heart. They at 20 something. Or oh God, stamina. I prophesy over your life. You have stamina with God. Amen. You will discover the things you used to give up on. You have strength to now rise above it. He that is above is above all. You are above all. Amen. Especially your emotional realm. God gives you predictive stamina. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Financial stamina. Amen. And, and you will not be covetous. You, you learn to manage. Do you understand that kind of stuff now? Sometimes some of you have enough than a ministry. I hope you know. In your accounts. Yes. Of course. Yes. And they are clapping for a people that may not have gathered one million constantly before. With the 1.4, you say your life does not make sense. You don't have stamina. I pray for you again in the name of Jesus. Everything that you have given up on, that God too is not participating with anymore. See, grace does not die. I will get there next week. Glory does not die. Power does not die. Calling does not die. Give does not die. What dies is consciousness. That's why we walk the path of altars. Be connected to someone. So that in the days you lack consciousness, when you touch it, it comes alive. Uh, you know, I, I love Apostle Ayubala so much. So I, I used to go to the place of the call. I, I really am not saying story. So they were talking about development as it were one day. We, uh, uh, do you understand? We, sh we shall give. You understand that kind of stuff? They now did renovation. So the place of the caterpillar call, you understand now? They broke it. And so I went visiting. We were traveling. I just said, let me enter. So I went. The people were saying, ah, they don't break place of call. People, I saw people crying that they laughed. I said, you see now. You see how idol worship happens. We came here for consciousness. How will you be holding caterpillar mode? But every time you got there, who gets the flow now? That's the idea. This is why they built altars in the old covenant. You will hear this where your father, is he, is he true or not? Some of you, bah, why your life has not resonated with heaven's flow is consciousness. The places where God kept your consciousness, you ate it. And I understand how it feels. You know, you know there are some songs you listen to. Me now, if I hear songs like, I can't hear this, glory to something. I, don't, I, just, I will be even in, in that, I will walk in the flesh right before your face. It's not like the song is no good. You know what I'm talking about. If, if they pick a oh boy, if, if I wanted to teach, I would tell you, you are not teaching again. Let me prophesy. Consciousness. You just imagine. Imagine I enter your house. You are playing. I mean, in Moshe came in I say, what are you trying to do? Consciousness. You are trying to look American. You left consciousness. You are trying to convince people you are great. You left. Or God, return back. Everything that did not leave you, but you are no more conscious of. I ban it in your life. Because of your renewed strength, we quicken it again now in the name of Jesus. And so you walk in your dent paths. You walk in your high places. In the name of the Jesus in heaven.
Give the Lord a big hand if you're blessed, people, and worship Him. Thank Him. Bless His holy name. Say great things to God and thank Him for what He has done tonight. I, I've taught you how to give Him praise. Thank Him for what you learned. Lord, I thank you because you sent my word. I now learned now that my birthday this year. I thank you for sending your word. I have now learned now that this and that. You get the flow now. Give Him praise. Come on in the name of Jesus. Do so from the depth. Do it louder. The Bible says your thanksgiving is much more than your request. And God has blessed you, shown you mercies, favored you. That's why I brought these things your way. Give him all the praise. Give him all the praise. Glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Shout amen. My 20 thereabouts, I stretch you again tonight. Hope you are not offended. Your nose sounds like you're offended. Though. Hope you're not offended. Well, no problem. You are like, what, what could I have done? C could I have? No. I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's just the way it works. All right. I'm sure we'll be saved, right? Let's get our givings going. If you have givings to give, give as you proposed in your heart. Do not give, you know, Apostle Paul taught giving as a commandment. The Bible says you should actually separate in the beginning of the week as much as God has blessed you. All right? But no compulsion. I hope you understand. Give because you understand giving. Don't give because it's an anointed service. The next week will not be lesser. Do you get what I'm saying now? Give because you are dutiful people in church. You know, this is where you are fed and all of that. I bless your givings in the name of Jesus. I put the prayers of God upon you. The Bible says give is given unto you. Good measure, shaking together all of that. Men gift. I'm shutting my head so that you can do what you're doing. You people are the reason why I'm shutting my head. I don't need to close my head to pray. Be fast. I pray in the name of Jesus. May men give to you. And I've always taught you, men don't give to you like they give a pastor. As you have product and services, I declare you have favor with mankind. People will easily ignore your heroes. They will ignore your limitations. They will embrace the hand of God upon you. People will love you enough to love what comes out of you. I put that testimony upon you to be your portion in the name of Jesus. All forms of giving in church tonight receive the life of God. This is a fertile soil. I declare that you receive a hundredfold returns. The Bible says God gives our seed another body. May he give your seed another body. With the intention through which you are giving prophetically, may my God show up for you. I declare also is our year for wealth. You will not lack. The Bible says we went to the fire. We went to the water. Men rode upon our heads, but we go to the place of grace. Wealthy place is the grace of empowerment. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will get to the wealthy place. Lastly, I declare, there are some of you always listening to me. You are like the captain of, you know, a tens and thousands, captains of family. Anyone in this place that people look up to, you are the one supplying. I know you are young, but it's real. I declare, your horn is exalted perpetually. Yeah. I've taught you discipline, but I'm led to pray for you today. While you listen to the discipline parts, don't use your capital to help family. I've said it. I pray, may your horn be exalted again. Yeah. We declare, everything you do, receive the life of God. Anything that shows financial increase, receive the life of God. I speak into it, increase in the name of Jesus. And I declare your health will not fail you. You will not use your resources fixing your health. I speak divine healings into your body. I speak divine health in your soul. You will be in health even as your soul prosper. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing my voice. Glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Thank you for showing up. See you Monday study, online only tomorrow. God bless you.